Hello to the gamers. It is a momentous occasion today. In honor of International Women's Month, we will be doing the QT Cinderella Name 100 Women Challenge that I was challenged to do yesterday. At first I saw the tweet. I didn't know that I got added in the tweet. I just laughed because I saw the tweet and it said one of the clauses was you can't name the woman in relation to a man, i.e. you can say Michelle Obama, but you can't say Obama's wife. I saw that and I said, they put that there specifically for Chibli. That's hilarious. Then I looked at, I was like, why am I getting so many notifications on Twitter right now? And I was like, oh shit, I got called out, man. The Chibli Clause. <clears throat> so I'm just making sure I got everything set up here appropriately. Let me rename this scene to Open Office Calc. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll do the No Actress Challenge. I'll do the No Actress Challenge as soon as uh, the other people stop naming adult film stars for like 17 of their 100. No, of course we're going to use actresses. Caught, 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 caught. <laughs> uh, half of Squeaks' list was Bollywood actresses? What are you trying to say about that? Why are you saying it in, in a way that's like remarkable? They're women. They're actresses. They're noteworthy figures. Just because you don't know who they are doesn't mean that, uh, you know, they don't exist. Americans, when you name someone from a different country, <gasps> is this allowed? I'm just going to be honest. There's going to be at least, if you're American, I'm going to guess the, the line for betting is there will be 21 Canadians on this list that you may not know. Pardon me if I had to guess. <clears throat> and we're loving every minute of it, Jerry. <clears throat> Slash marker challenge. I got called out, man, by QT Cinderella, noted streamer, producer and creator of the Streamer Awards. I got called out for the Name 100 Women Challenge. I just want to give, I have the screen region all set up. I just want to make sure you know the conditions of it. The Name 100 Women Challenge cannot use chat, cannot, can be dead women, can be streamers, can be any version of their name, i.e. you can use... Uh, Marilyn Monroe, a.k.a. Norma Jean. That's good, because I don't know Rihanna's birth name. Spelling doesn't count as long as your heart is in the right place. I think that's fair. No family friends, ex-girlfriends, neighbors, or any of that stuff. They have to be public figures. No fictional characters. I imagine that makes it very hard for chat. Hey, Fail Gunner, thanks for the gifted subscription. Subscriptions, I should say. No repeats. Timer starts as soon as you type the first letter of the first name, ends when you type the last letter of the last name, must be typed out in a list labeled 0 to 100, have to say their name, not a description, i.e. Michelle Obama is valid, Obama's wife, not valid. Check this out. You're about to see a master at Open Office Calc. I've even got the live split set up. You want to see something? Cell number A1. You put a 1. You click and drag this little box down here. You scroll that bad boy all the way down to 100 and look at that. Holy, bro. Can any other streamer compete with that? It doesn't count if you play Europa Universalis 4, okay? They're already numbered, though. Okay, but be that as it may. <laughs> hey, 
Hang on. Shall we get started? Let me make sure my live split works. I haven't used it in 10 years. We got that muscle memory. Okay. I cannot use chat, but please shout emotes if I ever forget to scroll down. I'm going to try to remember every 20 women I have to scroll down, okay? But if I don't scroll, I need you to put like emotes at Mach 5000 in chat so I can at least be reminded. Other, like, I'm not going to take women from chat. I got my own. It's like Cine 2 Nerdle battles, okay? The hardest part of this for me is going to be not looking at chat for 10 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> Shall we get started? I'm not going to sweat the, the split timer too much. This is just the first attempt anyway, okay? 100 women. Here we go. Start the timer. Good luck. We start with Rosalind Franklin. We go straight to Marie Curie. We go Roberta Bondar, Canadian astronaut. We go Julie Payette, Canadian astronaut. Manon Rume, ice hockey player. Marie Philip Poulin, ice hockey player. Haley Wickenheiser, ice hockey player. Cassie Campbell, ice hockey player. We go Jenny Finch, American softballer. Danica Patrick. Motorsports, Angela Merkel, politician, Janet Reno, politician, Condoleezza Rice, politician, Sonia Sotomayor, politician, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, American judiciary, Hillary Clinton, American politician, Kamala Harris, American politician, Eleanor Roosevelt, First Lady, Betty Ford, First Lady, Michelle Obama, First Lady, Kim Campbell, I need to scroll, sorry, I need to scroll, I'm looking at my screen region, there we go, Kim Campbell, Canadian politician, Belinda Stronach, Canadian politician, Jennifer Aniston, actress, Lisa Kudrow, actress, Courtney Cox, actress, Deborah Messing, actress, Patricia Heaton, actress. Tina Fey, SNL. Amy Poehler, SNL. Gilda Radner, SNL. Kristen Wiig, SNL. Molly Shannon, SNL. Melissa McCarthy, actress. Rose Byrne, actress. Halle Berry, actress. Rosamund, hang on, Pike, actress. Denise Richards, actress. Michelle Yeoh, actress. I'm just making sure I got a scroll. Okay, we're scrolling. We're on 39. Sophie Marceau, actress. Fam K. Jansen, actress. Anna Ferris, actress. Regina Hall, actress. Shannon Elizabeth, actress. Regina King, actress. Natasha Leon, an actress. Allison Hannigan, an actress. Now we're going to think, okay? <clears throat> Shannon Elizabeth. Michelle Trachtenberg, actress. Amanda Bynes, actress. Beyonce, singer and actress. Heather Graham, actress. Elizabeth Hurley, Actress, Cameron Diaz, Penelope Cruz, Mila Jovovich, Mila Jovovich, Nikki Minaj, Ariana Grande, Angela Bassett, Did the Thing, Viola Davis, My Woman King, Jamie Lee, You Are All of Us, Hong Chow, from the menu with Anya Taylor-Joy, who's in Dune 2 with Rebecca Ferguson, and Zendaya, who's in Spider-Man with Marissa Tomei, who was in The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, who, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, T-Tours, T-Tours, sorry, Jamie Lee Curtis, where was I going with this? Marissa Tomei, Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, Mickey Rourke, 
was in Sin City with Jessica Alba. That's true. That is true. How about Catherine Heigl? How about Annette Benning? Sissy Spacek? Meryl Streep? Cher? Goldie Hahn? Kate Hudson? Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Diana, Kate Middleton, Meghan Markle, Jacinda Arnett, <laughs> that might not be your name. You know what, let's delete that, let's delete that. Oh, don't delete all, I'm scared. Can I get a check, is this her name? Is this the former Arden? Okay, well, I'm going to delete it then because that's taken from chat. Please don't delete 78 of them, though. Okay, hold on this one. <clears throat> we are going to say actresses. Anne Hathaway. Julie Andrews. Emily Blunt. Emily Dickinson. Tony Morrison, Harper Lee, Kate Spade, Donatella Versace. Hang on, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Um, Florence Pugh, Kristen Bell, Elizabeth Moss. Christina Hendricks, other shows. Rebecca Hall, Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore, Katherine Keener, Elizabeth Banks, Janelle Monet, Carolyn Polacek. It's so doable. Vanessa Kirby, Vanessa Williams, Diana Ross, and Donna Summer. Go back to live split time. Six minutes, 54 seconds, 88 milliseconds. How's that, brother? How's that for naming 100 women? Sub seven minutes? You have double Jamie Lee. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't know that. Okay, double Jamie Lee. No! Oh! Okay, just add the time. I hit one by accident. 101, we go um, Thora Birch. Time? Add another, add another 12 seconds to the top, okay? Add another 13 seconds to the top. You didn't have double anyway? Why would you do that to me? Chatter was wrong. Where did we drop Jamie Lee Curtis? Oh, no, no, no. We, we did have a double. We had Jamie Lee, which I didn't finish, and then Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you told me, to be honest. That's helpful. Jamie Lee's a different person. Yeah, but I don't know who that is, so I'm not going to take resin on that. You can put me at like seven minutes and five seconds or seven minutes and nine seconds. I can live with that. Hey, the St. Jimmy, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Sub eight minutes. Oh, listen, it's like seven minutes, eight seconds, bro. It's not, don't call it sub eight. It's sub 430 seconds. I think we could do better, too. I stalled a couple of times. To be honest, realistically, I thought it would be um, like 12 to 13 minutes. I thought, you'd, you know, you'd, it's hard to think of such a wide subset. Like, I know so many women. The hard part is actually narrowing it down. Some of those are dead. Yeah, we covered that at the start. Um, not to be rude. Here's the rule straight from QT Cinderella. Can be dead women. It's literally the second line in the rule book. So, 
No disrespect, but learn how to read. You come to the, the champ, you best not miss. Not many of them were dead. Bro, we dropped Rosalind Franklin ASAP. Now do 100 men. Um, um, Michelle Obama's husband. Uh, uh, Eva Mendez's husband, Ryan Gosling. Uh, uh, um, okay. Keenan Houston, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. We'll do a slash marker. Challenge accepted. It's just that easy. My hands were shaking a little bit, though. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't even... Listen. Two things. First off, I love that people will literally unironically respond to the challenge and say, I can't even name 100 men. It's like one of the most sexist things I've ever heard in my entire life, and I'm supposed to be the misogynist. Why would it be harder to name 100 women than 100 men? Why do you assume that it would be easier to name 100 men? That, that's a troubling sort of bias in, in your verbiage, for one. Secondarily, I didn't want to put them on blast, but the person in the Discord who said they needed help from a friend and they named every single member of Hololive. Oof, I would not... With a gun to my head, you wouldn't be able to get me to admit that, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, I'm gonna... I mean, brother, I hate to say it, okay? I know people are getting a little sick of it. The fact that you're getting sick of it is exactly why we have to make the progress. Because if you think you're sick of it now, imagine if we were playing that shit like three weeks from now. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Call this uh, a difficult game. And then we'll do other stuff today, too. The, the challenge didn't take me as long as I thought. It should be name 1,000 women. <laughs> well, maybe not. That's a, little, that's a little much. Hey, paper mache Mephistopheles. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you. Whew. Do you hear it? Double it and give it to the next guy? I am challenging Chibli to do it next. I want to see Chibli do it. And honestly, I do think Chibli will be fine. But simultaneously, I do wonder if he even can conjure the name of 250 people. I know he, like... Right, difficult climb. I know Chibli outed me for the Discord message I sent to him. Where I said... Because we're talking about the name 100 women in Microsoft Excel challenge. And I said, I'm honestly no disrespect, but I'm not sure more than 250 names actually exist in your head. He took offense to it. But I don't think that it's offensive. When he said, excuse me, in reply to it, I said, don't be offended. Your talents lie in other areas, which I think is true. I mean, you've seen him play Quicksort. Like, I don't think he's a name Andy. He's a creative thinker. He's not like a, a, a knowledge regurgitator. He comes up with his own wisdom. It's a backhanded compliment? No, if anything, it's like a forehanded insult. It's like, it, if you don't think about it, it seems insulting, but I actually mean it in like the most complimentary way possible. Next time. Next time. I just got a 1556 in this game. I'm so happy. Okay, random eye. Here's where we find out if you're a glory hunter. Slash user random eye. If this is the first message in chat, you're in for a world of hurt. That's all I'm going to say. Following since February 1st, 2017, 432 messages. Binding of Isaac background. I think spiced coke is actually pretty good. Bidets are good. It's better than an air fryer. Let's see. Let's scroll back. I'm, I'm back in 2022, exclamation point docket. I'm back in 
I'm back in 2021. My points. We have a real, that's a real viewer right there. You know what? Congratulations on your, on your 1556 run in a difficult game about climbing. That's very impressive. I was hoping, well, I guess I'm glad with the way that it worked out. I was hoping that you were just like someone really good at a difficult game about climbing who just is like drive buying the directory. And going like, I just got a 1556. I'm so happy. And then I audit you and you have no messages in my chat ever. Come on. Come on. Got any tips for me? <laughs> Nope. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Whee! You know what speedrun categories Chibli's top three in? He's a number one world record holder having sex in The Sims. I know that for a fact. Um, I don't know the. I don't know the rest. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> it's called woohoo. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? You you who is euphemistic? Oh, it's true. Tokyo 2020 speed climbing. The record was previously held by your mum. Next time. He was hitting that shit till it looked like Goopy Carbonara. I know that for a fact. Oh, that's gross. I've seen this shit that you write. It's the only thing I know about The Sims, man. Goopy Carbonara. <laughs> Why is it Goopy? I didn't make it. You gotta take that up with Will Wright, bro. Still thinking about how you said Chibli's not smart like you, he's just creative smart. Yo, but that's, I mean that. Like, Chibli is, is the funniest person that I know. I'm pretty funny sometimes, but most of my humor is like, hey, this is like, it's family guy, right? This is just like the time. Me when I'm Dennis Miller hosting the Dennis Miller show, I don't want to go off on a rant here. And Chibli will just open his mouth and say like, you know, French Bulldog, and it's the funniest thing you've ever heard. Oh! <laughs> hold, hold, hold. So true, British people playing pole mine. That, that moment lives rent free in my head. What the fuck you mean baked beans are number one? <laughs> oh man. You think Paul Atreides was too ex pimpy? Um Well, I don't know. Like I understand the idea that there's selective breeding as uh forced by the Bene Gesserit, but I don't know if it's necessarily um, reducing genetic diversity, you know? I don't know if there's a whole lot of, maybe there is in the book, I haven't read the books yet, but maybe there's more of it like an inbreeding situation in the book, but I don't think that necessarily they make that implication in the film. They were gonna breed him with Fade Rautha? No, they weren't. Fade Rautha, is supposed to be the father of the Kwisatz Haderach. They weren't going to have him fuck Paul Atreides in the butt. How would they even conceive? In the Dune universe, I don't believe it works that way. Paul was supposed to be a lady. Oh, okay. Well, now, actually, you, gotta, you raise a good point there. <laughs> I forgot that his, his mom conceived a son because she loved Oscar Isaac so much. 
Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You cooked me on that one. Hold, hold, hold. Who? Did I miss him naming 100 women? Yes, because you blinked. <laughs> I mean, we were, we were cruising. We did have to go back to the well because I accidentally named Jamie Lee Curtis two times. But we put down a pretty good time. I mean, we, so it took us 700 and, uh, seven minutes and 10 seconds to name 100 women. That's like a woman every five seconds. And I had to type it. And for the first 30, for some reason, I was saying their profession as if like you wouldn't believe me. Because I started with a lot of like Canadian astronauts. <laughs> and I was like, they don't know who the fuck Roberto Bondar is, bro. Well... You did a lot of hockey players? Yeah. I mean, the Canadian women's team is goaded, bro. You think I don't know Manon Rume? You think I don't know Marie-Philippe Poulain? You think I don't know Haley Wickenheiser? You think I don't know Cassie Campbell Pascal? Come on. You're, I, I miss the tennis vein completely. You're absolutely right. Justine Enin Arden, Maria Sharapova, Anna Kornikova, Steffi Graf, Martina Navratilova. I mean, we, we easily could have picked up like another 20 tennis players without a doubt. Okay, relax. We believe you. Oh, now I'm naming, now I'm naming too many women. Now I'm not misogynist enough for you. You're trying too hard? You didn't name enough musicians? You guys weren't even ready for my uh, Tina Weymouth into... Belinda Harris into Debbie Harry combo. Honestly, like from wake up, that shit can take you down to like 10% of your life bar. Next time, next time. Belinda Butcher when? I think that's what I meant when I said Belinda Harris. <laughs> Hold. What's the name of the lady in Arcade Fire? Oh, you mean Regine Chassus? Mountains Beyond Mountains, Sprawl 2? I don't think they've heard of Sprawl 2, Pippin. Missed Pat Benatar? Uh, brother, it's not 1985 anymore. Nobody's missing Pat Benatar. What the fuck? I don't like Pat Benatar's music very much. I know, she does put on airs in Arcade Fire. She says, like, they heard me singing and they told me to stop. Quit these familiar things and just punch the clock. Sometimes I wonder if the world's so small, if I could ever get away from the sprawl. Well, you live in Montreal, lady. Like, move out to Trois-Rivières or uh, Laval or something. You can move to Labrador, you know? Just drive north a little bit. You chose to live in, like, the third biggest city in the country. Like, what do you want me to say? Hold. Hold. Yeah. <laughs> Hold. 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 Believe. Yeah. Oh, that was good, dude. I had so much laterality. That was improvement. Laterality? 
Well, many of you obviously don't know Maynard James Keenan. Did you know he has a 17 octave vocal range and frequently writes in time signatures that are a prime number over top of another prime number? The only Maynard I know makes wine gums. I'm going to plus to you for that, but I, I have a question for you. Are wine gums the worst candy sold in the grocery store? Too hard compared to other gummies. Muted fruit flavor compared to other candies. Like, like what are we doing with these wine gums, bro? Licorice is worse. I'd plus two that. I think that's definitely true. You like Swedish fish? I do. I, I really like Swedish fish. I didn't know that they, until recently, that they're like a, a very divisive candy. Some people can't stand them. The crazy thing about Swedish fish, and I know I've said this before, maybe a, like a year ago, they're so, I mean, all candy is bad for you, but Swedish fish are so bad for you relative to how like not crazy they taste. Like, the flavor of a Swedish fish is, like, mild, but then when you look up the nutritional data, you're like, where the hell is the... Where's all this fucking poison coming from? It's crazy. It's all sugar and corn syrup? Yeah, but they're all just sugar and corn syrup. <laughs> so how did, they, how did they get the Swedish fish to be so much worse for you than the other, like, like a fuzzy peach or something like that? Close, bro. Hello, Sinvicta. Hello. Sinvicta, will you be doing the name 100 women challenge? I don't want to brag, but I put down a pretty good time. Do you like cheesies? My sister brought some from Canada. They're very salty. Hawkins cheesies are... Um, they're a Canadian classic. I do, I do like them, but again, I don't buy them because they're actually like... I mean, if they're in a function, I will eat some for sure. But they're so much worse for you than even regular Cheetos. Because I think like there's like per cheesy, there's like 20 times more corn. Like those fuckers are dense. Like they can chip your tooth. Oh! <laughs> hold, hold, hold. Hold, hold. Yeah, I'm a Cheetos. We're Costco guys. Of course we like Cheetos. Also, I don't know what, what powder they use. Hold. <laughs> for the Hawkins Cheetos, but I honestly think they glow in the dark. Like, Cheetos are orange, Hawkins Cheesies are actually, like, made with real deuterium or something like that. Like, they're, they're radium-infused, exactly. They have phospholuminescence. You ever tried Juji Fruits? Isn't that the candy that Elaine bought from the movie theater after hearing that her boyfriend got into a car accident. Hi, Tomo. Oh! Hold, hold. Every time I come to the stream, you're at the same point? Yeah, well, every time I see your message, it says the same fucking thing, bro. Maybe we're doomed to go around in this, like, you know, twin galaxy star system over and over, doing the same shit. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I'm the Joel Barish to your Clementine Krasinski. Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet would have been a great pull. Because then from there, like, the, the secret to the Name 100 Women Challenge is you don't try to name women. You name one woman, 
and then narrow down the category to, to things surrounding that woman in a web. So you go, okay, Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet was in Titanic. Other women in Titanic, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates, she's also in Rat Race with Whoopi Goldberg and Amy Smart. Amy Smart, of course, is in um, The Butterfly Effect with Ashton Kutcher, who was on that 70s show with Laura Preppen and Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis was in Forgetting Sarah Marshall with Kristen Bell and Jonah Hill, who was in Get Him to the Greek with Elizabeth Moss, who was on Mad Men with Christina Hendricks, who was in Bad Santa 2, which also had Kathy Bates. <laughs> to be fair, I'll admit that that one, they would see, we now we just doubled up on Kathy Bates. But that's okay. You could do worse than that. So it's basically Cine 2 Nerdle. Well, the secret is like, if I asked you to like name every food, in one minute, you would probably come up with like 50 foods. But if I asked you to name every vegetable, you would probably come up with like 75 vegetables. Yep. I think that the way the brain works, you need to give like a, a, the smaller the subset, the easier it is to come up with almost all of them. We were like a micrometer away. You name one K-pop group, that's like 10 people right there. Yeah, but you like, I'm going to call Resin on it because I don't want to see a list that says like fucking Jenny. I want to see f fucking first name, last name, bro. Unless they're known exclusively by a, a single name like Madonna. Beyonce? I'll fucking type Beyonce Knowles. Beyonce Knowles Carter, if that makes you happy. You better not type, you know, Jisoo Blackpink. That's all I'm trying to say. As far as I'm concerned, that's a description rather than a name. I did the challenge last night. It took me 48 minutes. No disrespect. What went wrong? 48, that's, that's a woman every 30 seconds. <laughs> that's kind of slow well I mean that's what I'm saying I'm not trying to be rude but 48 minutes I don't know any famous people well then don't you shouldn't do the challenge honestly like the challenge isn't for you that's like I'm not going to go to the local track meet and do the high jump I don't have hops I couldn't even name a hundred men in 40 minutes. Realistically, like, you absolutely could. Come on. Like, you, you have, like, had a hobby in your life at some point, right? Like, you could probably name minimum, if you're, if you're from North America, I bet you could name, like, at least 12 presidents, even if you don't know who they are, you've heard their names. Then, like, if you've ever watched sports, just name, like, two teams rosters and you're there. Or maybe you're like a YouTube Andy. You, you probably name the pseudonym for like, you know, 25 YouTubers or something, right? Like you can get there pretty quick, man. I could name eight presidents max? Brother, I've been alive for like eight presidents. What do you mean you can name eight? So you know George Washington, you know Abraham Lincoln. That's a given. And then just like, you can't remember like the last six? Biden, Trump, Obama, George W. Bush. Bill Clinton, George H.W. Bush, Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, Linda B. Johnson, John F. Kennedy, Dwight Eisenhower. Like, get a clue, man. Yeah, we didn't even mention Thomas Jefferson, McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt, FDR. You know? Like, you, come on. I, I, if you... I, I believe that everybody in this chat can name 100 women and 100 men. It's just a matter of asking your brain the right question. Instead of saying conjure 100 men, which is a difficult task, you just say, hey, name 20 athletes, 20 singers, 20 actors, 20 politicians, and then like fill in the gaps. 
I literally can't do it. I don't believe you. You can do anything. I don't believe... Like, I believe you have at least 1,000 recognizable names in your head. The hard part is pulling a hundred of them out without, like, you know, having any impetus to do so. Oh! <laughs> you just gotta ask your brain the right questions, man. Hold. Yeah, like, you just start with the theme, bro. Start with historical figures. I got, I got a little bit stuck. My brain said, you know what? Queen Elizabeth II. Where do we go from that? Princess Diana. Kate Middleton. Meghan Markle. Could have said Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York. Could have said Queen Elizabeth I. Could have said Mary, Queen of Scots. Could have said Joan of Arc. Could have said Catherine the Great. Could have said... Fucking Hippolyta or something like that. You could have said Mama Liz. <laughs> Mama Liz. Cleopatra. Nefertiti. Tifa. You know, like there's lots of options. Hold. Selena Gomez, exactly. Selena Gomez, people. Selena Gomez, who was in um, Only Murders in the Building with Martin Short, who guest starred on Arrested Development with Portia de Rossi, who was married to Ellen the Generous. Hold. We got lines, bro. I stole Ellen the Generous from Slime. I know Slime's time was a little longer. I was really impressed he knew who Sue Johansson was. Oh! We spun it, baby! <clears throat> I honestly didn't know Americans knew who Sue Johansson was. We don't. She used to run a show on Canadian TV that was called like the Sunday Night Sex Show or something like that. She's like the Canadian Dr. Ruth. Oh! <laughs> oh no, I hear Dada. You know what? Let me, let me go check on this.
Being three must actually be like really hard, man. No joke. Cause like, your emotions are like all over the place. Like she's crying. She was like, daddy, I want a hug before I go. I miss daddy so much. So I gave her like a big hug. Yesterday, right after daycare pickup, I'm gonna embellish the situation a little bit, but it's basically like this. Pick her up, bring her home from daycare. She's like, Daddy, I wanna eat this light bulb. I say, you can't eat that light bulb. You'll break the glass in your mouth and bleed a lot and have to go to the hospital. And she goes, I don't like you anymore. You are bad. The mood swings are, are crazy, man. <laughs> She's been saying lately, like she's going, she's going up and down. She's been saying I'm evil lately. But she says it with like a smile. She goes like, you are bad, you are evil. And I'm like, I'm not, what, I'm evil? Just because I won't let you like do something that's going to lead to you breaking your leg or something like that? I'm evil now? Hold, hold. That one was a little weak. I get called rude. They just be saying stuff, man. I'm not mad at her, you know, she's a kid. Holy cow. Hold, oh, do you see the laterality on that jump? Just wait, it gets worse. Well, people are always saying like, um... Oh! He closed his fist! <clears throat> we could taste that one, so true. <laughs> people are always saying like, wait till she's a teenager. I'm not saying it's gonna be easier. I'm saying there's different goods and different bads. When my daughter's being a, a little bit, you know, when she's got an attitude problem at age four. I mean, your ass still got to play with her, right? What are you going to do? Leave her alone? When she's got an attitude problem at like age 16, you'll be like, all right, go fuck yourself. I'm going to watch some TV. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be like that then fucking go to your room. At least I'm, I'm confident that you're not going to, like, you know, smash your head through the glass window or something like that. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's easier. I'm simply saying at least you can... They have some independence, so you're like, okay, you want to take a timeout? Go take a timeout. The streets are saying you can just say no when they ask to play. Yeah, I guess. I feel bad though. Oh, that was close. The streets are mean? I guess that's true. Hey, go off, Kings. Thanks for the raid. We're talking about parenting right now. My, my three-year-old just doesn't have the same sense of, like, danger that you gain as you become, like, a, a more experienced adult. Like, you know what she tries to do every day? She puts on her mom's slippers and walks around. No big deal, you know. Her mom's, like, a women's size seven, and she's three years old, so obviously she's not filling the shoes, but no big deal. But then she goes to the edge of the staircase... And he's like, I'm going to walk down the stairs in mom's slippers. And I'm like, no, the fuck you aren't. You're going to tumble down the stairs like a, a prop dummy from Walker, Texas Ranger and die. And then she's mad at me that I like take the slippers off. It's crazy, man. G mod. <laughs> Okay, this shit don't happen every day. We hold. 
and hold. Don't lose your grip, bro. I'm not confident in that. I'm simply not confident in that. I'd rather I'd rather go for a better hold. Guys, I'm not confident in it. I'm simply the, the grip is not strong enough. We take our time. That's the sort of stuff we're looking for. Okay, hold, <laughs> focus. Took us many, many hours to progress to this point. This is a lock-in type of situation. Love it. Don't love it. Love it. Are you holding? You're holding, okay. Beautiful. That last one's far away, huh? <clears throat> you have to make the jump, right? Oh, there's a rock on the left. You saved my life. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna launch, bro. I believe this is grabbable. I didn't even let go with my left hand. Momentum let go with my left hand. We got a little lucky. Hold. Things got a little spooky there. Okay, you gotta, this is, <laughs> it's a touch slippy. <clears throat> Want a good handhold? Hold. Hold. Oh my god, is it another pool? Not yet, not yet. Snow? <laughs> This feels amazing. Huge. <laughs> okay, hold. Hold. If you're just joining us, this is a momentous occasion, okay? I mean, I honestly don't know what to do. You have to do a leap of faith, right? Yes! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! New pool. That was scary, bro. Like, I'm actually, I'm not shaking as bad as I was when I was trying to name 100 women, but I, I was getting a little nervous there. Hey, Weezna123, Albatross Ascot, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, and R Mater, thank you as well. Thank you. Oh, man. Shrinkage? I just watched that episode last night. I mean, George is pretty fucked up in that episode. Hey, Colling Lee, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's, let's go over that episode from George's perspective, okay? Yes. That's fine. His girlfriend uh, sunbathes topless. 
next to Jerry Kramer and Elaine in the Hamptons uh, before George has seen her naked. I would say that's her right. If she wants to sunbathe topless, then so be it. George has no reason to feel aggrieved. Um, but then he says in order for it to be fair, he gets to see... Or no, 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 because, well, no, he gets to see Jerry's girlfriend naked because he's mad that Jerry saw his girlfriend naked. So he kept trying to bust in on her when she was changing, which is basically, I don't know, at, at the very least, sexual harassment, I would say. Then the plan backfires, and Jerry's girlfriend busts in on George when he's getting changed out of his swimsuit. Um, and obviously she sees his penis, and it's diminutive because he was in the pool. That's where the famous quote, I was in the pool! I was in the pool! That's where that comes from. Okay, so he's already, like, he's at two strikes, bro. Then, George, uh, Jerry's girlfriend, who saw George naked, tells George's girlfriend that she saw his penis and it was small. But because women apparently don't know about shrinkage, she basically, like, hightails it out of there and says, like, uh, you know, I don't want to be with this guy anymore. Sucks for George, don't get me wrong. Oop, drama, so true. How does George respond to that? He cooks breakfast for everybody in the morning and includes lobster in the scrambled eggs, even though he knows Jerry's girlfriend is uh, a practitioner of Judaism and is trying to keep kosher. So I don't, I don't know exactly all about the tenets of Judaism, but... I believe that from her perspective, he basically said, you're going to hell now because of the, the shrinkage stuff, which is pretty messed up. <laughs> but also, least media literate Seinfeld criticism of all time. Um, oftentimes, the, the main characters of Seinfeld are the bad guys, which is part of what makes the show funny. Hold. Hold. All the time? I don't think all the time. When Jerry reports Poppy's Italian restaurant to the health department because Poppy took a shit and then didn't wash his hands afterwards and then he was getting his knuckles into the dough when he was making the pizza. Like that one to me, I wouldn't have done it, but I can see why he did it. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. Okay. Not my finest move there. When, oh, that's true. When George gave the security guard a chair. Yeah, the place got robbed afterwards. That's not George's problem. And to be honest with you, I don't really feel like it's the security guard's problem. Puppy got a little sloppy. <laughs> George, when he murdered his fiance. George didn't murder his fiance. She died due to poison glue. His decision to get cheaper invitations led to the cheaper glue, but he didn't poison the glue in the first place. Holy new water. Prezzo, we're so back. I named 100 women in seven minutes, and we're at a new pool in a difficult game about climbing. George has insane lore. I mean, honestly, George Costanza has one of the highest charisma stats, even though the joke in the show is that he's pathetic. Like, think about the, the riz that George Costanza has in that show. My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. Hi, I'm Jennifer. Then he goes, he gets an interview with the New York Yankees and he goes to meet directly with George Steinbrenner. And then George Steinbrenner's like, it's a pleasure to meet you, George. And he goes, I wish I could say the same, Mr. Steinbrenner, but you and your clown organization have turned this city and this team into a laughing stock for the last 20 years. And then he goes, George Steinbrenner goes, hire this man. Like he's, he's got an unbelievable charisma stat. Help, 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 help. That's fine, that's fine. 
It's called Aura. I mean, have you seen him in the Gore-Tex? The, the episodes, like any Seinfeld episode in the summertime, George actually looks like the coolest person that works at an East Vancouver brewery. Like the, the culture has now made George Costanza into a fashion god. The dad hat and like the, the plaid shirt. He's got the pastels. He's got drip, man. The denim. <laughs> Whoa! Kramer's drip too. He's got the Kavorka, it doesn't count. Hold, hold. Old. We're Seinfeld guys. Of course, we have incredibly attractive partners. <laughs> Some truth to that. Hold. Hold. <clears throat> now, I don't really know what we're supposed to do here, brother, because, like, we're not making that jump. Over to the side, or to the top. Maybe we can make it over to the side of the mountain. It's a full send right. <laughs> Wee. Like that, but better. I'm not even taking offense to that. I'm just happy to be on the new pool, bro. Hey, Anel, how many times per day do you think about your posture? I hate to say it, I'm a posture non-believer. Full disclosure, I don't have, like, chronic back pain. But, and, and I'm not saying I'm right, I'm simply saying... Watch that. We'll go with Goofy style. Um, I'm simply saying this is my opinion. Whenever people are like really, really, really concerned with their posture and they're not like a, an ergonomic scientist or whatever, I look at it the same way someone tells me that they like healed their ailment with crystals or something like that. Just for me, I'm like, I'm glad that you're healed. I'm glad that this is serving you. But you're being an evangelist about something that I find, I don't know, somewhat dubious at least. Yeah, I saw the person who said they healed their kidney infection through the power of positive thinking. This shit kind of pissed me off, not because they're like ignoring medicine, but because I kind of feel like it's ignoring how amazing your human body is. Like, you did not manifest healing your kidney infection. Like, your body has been fucking training through 1.8 billion years of, like, eukaryotic evolution to fight that shit off, bro. Show some respect. Hold. 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 <laughs> yes, I did see the TikTok comment on me solving the mini crossword in 22 seconds. And the comment said, what's his job? His real job? <laughs> I, I didn't... I didn't know if they were being serious or not, but whether they were being serious or not serious is a very funny comment. I actually, so I'm not trying to take anything away from it being reposted on Twitter, but I saw that comment like in the wild because I checked my, my TikToks to see if they're popping off or dying on the vine. Spoilers, seven and eight times dying on the vine. No fault of the editor. 
just randomly TikTok. They, they do like a Wheel of Fortune card every time you post something. And they're like, nope, nope, nope. This one, 10 million views. Nope, 10 million views. 2 million views. Nope, 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 nope. Hold. Hold. They actually get 10 mil sometimes. No, I think the highest viewed tick, it's probably like two or three million. My, my highest viewed TikToks are me talking about yellow paint in video games and saying, oh, that was not great, saying every video game should just be Slay the Spire. Uh, and then me in Call of Duty Warzone placing a circular mine on the ground and then spray painting a bullseye over top of it. And the textures are so cooked, it just disappears into the floor. So the enemy teams can't see it. <laughs> And then also the time we were in the stairwell in Call of Duty Warzone. No! And then at the top of the building, we called in an airstrike because we knew there were dudes on the roof. And then they busted down the emergency exit door and we just slaughtered them in the, in the staircase. Hold. Now the baseball bit is like insane on YouTube. I don't know. It has like 10 million views or something. But on TikTok, it has like 50,000. Like it just goes, there's, there's a lot of like luck involved, man. And TikTok monetization is so funny. I check it like once a month. Currently, they're running a promotion. You can film a commercial for Canadian Tire to celebrate the Canadian Tire X Moving Day promotion, whatever the hell that is. And I was like, I'm not going to do that, but at least it's like a legitimate advertiser. And then like every other one is like, we'll pay you $25 to use like our AI voice generator in a TikTok. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. Like, some of the advertisers on TikTok are so cooked, they didn't even, like, fill out the metadata for the campaign. It'll just say, like, for the description of what you have to do, it'll just say UGC, which is user-generated content, for product. And then the product is, like, a, a JPEG of, like, a five-star binder or something like that. And you're like, what do, this is not a reputable platform, man. Wee. They still make five stars? What are kids using these days in school? iPads, duo tangs. I mean, if you had five stars back in the day, you were, you, you were getting raised with a silver spoon. Let's put it that way. So am I grabbing the snowy rock on the far right? Or am I, drag, am I grabbing something further down? It's down and to the right. What if, what if we scramble a little bit? My God, it actually, you can grab the rock, bro. You scramble like a rat. Tomotech. <laughs> Egg past the wheel. I almost can't believe it myself, but it is true. I'm so happy we didn't squander the one time we made it past the wheel. And that, brother, that was not an, a gimme. <laughs> the the post-wheel section was, was very hot. Okay, this one's tough. I haven't practiced as many left swings as right swings. That's fine. We'll hold. It's an awfully real kind of wheel. I'm a feminine lesbian Eminem. He's got sun on his perineum. Not taking shit from anyone. Sorry. 2013 ass comedy. 
Harrison Ford under the floorboards of a 4X Ford Explorer. Four door Ford Ford Explorer. Harrison Ford under the floorboards. Oh. <laughs> The thing goes scra. You know, this is not a joke. Just to give you some idea of the level of cookedness of Peloton music. There are multiple Peloton rides that use Man's Not Hot, the, the full song, with no irony. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad song, but I am saying it's a meme song. So sometimes you'll be doing like... Uh, like a 30 minute alley love Tabata ride and then she'll put on man's not hot and you're like what are we what are we doing here two plus two is four quick maths <laughs> no ketchup just sauce and you're like it's tough man it's tough wow I'm about to meet with representatives from the EPA but I'm watching this dude play a climbing game I'm getting pissed off. It's not your fault. This is a Vancouver thing. No! Well, we're Vancouver guys. Of course we slip and fall. Um, like, four months ago, everybody in Vancouver independently was like, what the fuck's that smell? And then there was, like, a huge fire at, like, a chemical refinery in Burnaby, which is just east of Vancouver. It fucked up the air quality in the city for like three days. I mean the entire city. Um, they just got fined like this week. Motherfuckers got fined $38,000. It's fucking nothing, bro. It should be fined like, a, I, don't, I don't care if it wasn't their fault. You gave us all like mesothelioma or something. You should be paying out the damn nose. We should get like an extra... Fucking Skytrain line out of that shit or something. Yeah. Never let a crisis go to waste, brother. Couldn't they at least give us like some free school lunches for 10 years or something like that? $38,000? This shit is like a, a half-decked out Ford Fusion. Oh. Dan has you picture in picture. <laughs> you know what would be funny? If we just go like this. Uh, get, me out, <laughs> get me out of the box. Get me out of the box. Imagine if it started making cracks in the webcam. And then the fist came all the way through. What the fuck did you just say to me, you little bitch? And then I pull you into the frame. And it's and then I throw you back through the frame and you go that'd be kind of sick right good one <laughs> Germa for people with jobs. <laughs> you know what? Here's it. I was cooking yesterday. I was making some good jokes. Hey, Corpse Slime, by the way, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Hope your strange phone situation works itself out. I saw you talking about that in chat. I was, I was telling some serious heaters yesterday. It all got washed away. The reactions to my jokes got washed away because I said the phrase germaphobe. And like 5,000 people all type Germa at the same time. I would like to think, I don't know Germa that well, but I know him better than you probably. Because we've spoken in real life. Well, on Discord at least. I would like to think that he would be ashamed of your actions. I would like to think that he is... No! A comedy respecter. 
and would say, come on, guys, let, let the jokes shine through. Don't derail the audience response to the jokes just because he said a word that kind of sounds like my name. Like, I think he would be like, I appreciate the attention, but at the same time, I don't want it to distract from, you know, the professional respect that I have for my colleague. That's just me talking, though. Because now I don't even remember the jokes. All I can remember is never say germaphobe again. Because you can't, it, it just, the volume when you say germaphobe goes up to 170 decibels. You can't hear anything else. Hold, hold. What's his McDonald's order again? <laughs> Sorry. And was it real? Because you never know with that guy. Two McChickens. I remember there was, it's not two McChickens, because two McChickens is not that crazy. It's like one McChicken and then six other things and then one more McChicken at the end. Like even the, the order itself is like a sandwich with McChickens for buns. Oh, we almost got it. Two McChickens, 10-piece combo, hang on, McChicken 2X, extra mayo, 10 pi <laughs> no pickles, apple pie, large Powerade? Oh, brother. He's on the damn, the Powerade? That's crazy. I wouldn't have, t well, you know what, I guess I would take him as a Powerade drinker, not in a negative way, necessarily, but... I don't even think they have Powerade. Prezzo, back me up here. Canadian McDonald's. I know Powerade is a Coke product. I don't think that they have Powerade at our McDonald's. Sometimes they still have Fruitopia, which is crazy. I don't even know if Fruitopia like, exists outside of McDonald's anymore. Not even close. We got orange Fruitopia still. I don't want to make you feel bad, but you will never be 12 years old in the year 2000 going to see a movie at the Cineplex and a Fruitopia commercial plays with like Tomorrow Never Knows by the Beatles while a kaleidoscope of fruit goes on the IMAX screen. Turn off the old mind, relax and float downstream. You've unlocked the memory. Canadian movie theater commercials go kind of crazy, dude. Like Colonel Colonel and his popcorn menagerie. They fucking love getting eaten, bro. Not their popcorn that tries to get people to buy popcorn. And you know what's crazy is that like in the most famous commercial of all of them, they fucking pay for the popcorn. It's like not only did they say it's okay, you can eat us, but they busted out their Scotiabank scene visa card so they could pay for themselves to be eaten. Whatever happened to time play? Is it just dead now? Time play, I'll, I'll tell you my experience with time play. And it's the greatest hit, but we haven't done it in a while, okay? Um... First, you used to go to the movie theater and you would just sit in darkness until the trailer started. Then, I would say maybe 1997, 1998 in Canada, you would go to the theater and you would sit in darkness and then the lights would dim a little bit and you'd be like, oh shit, the trailers are about to start. And then you would watch 25 minutes of car commercials over and over. And you were like, what the fuck is this? Movie's supposed to start at 2.50. It's uh, 310 and they haven't even gotten to the trailers yet because they're trying to get me to buy like a Kia Sportage. Then they said, OK, we kind of fucked up with that one, but we're going to we're going to keep it because you can't roll it back. Um, they started running like movie trivia where you just shouted at the screen before the commercial started. Hold You know, like that's where Lazy Sunday comes from. We answered so fast it was scary. Whole theater stands up when we say Matthew Perry. 
You know, it would be like this actor was Chandler Bing on Friends. And then it would be like a silhouette of Matthew Perry's face and you would be like, that's Matthew Perry. And then they would like make it a little bit opaque and you'd be like, yeah, it's Matthew Perry. And then like 45 seconds later, they would be like, Matthew Perry. Anyway, then there was a goaded era. This is what I say when I say like technology peaked and has been in decline ever since. Right around the proliferation of smartphones, they made smartphone integrated trivia before the movie where you would compete with the other people in the movie theater to answer movie related trivia questions and you would win scene points, which is not like real money. But if you won at like a, a big showing, you could usually get enough to redeem for like a snack or something like that. Maybe not like a full concessions order, but enough points to like be meaningful. Then they started doing sponsored bits in the time play that fucking sucked. So I remember it, it used to be like, you know, name the director of this movie. And I would be like, boom, fucking Sidney Pollack. Thanks for the scene points. Then it started to be like, which goldfish cracker flavor is the best? And you'd be like, I don't know, fucking cheddar cheese. And they're like, wrong, bitch, flavor blasted. Someone else is getting your scene points now. And I'm like, that's not even trivia anymore, bro. And then they started doing like smartphone enabled games that sucked ass. Like I remember Recycle BC or Return It BC, which is like our recycling organization sponsored a bunch of it. So like before the movie, you would play a game where you like fling cans on your phone into like the proper recycling bin. And then like the top three people got enough scene points to like get a free trip to the bathroom or something like that. And I was like, it's over. It's never coming back, man. Then I found out that that motherfucker, well, I'm just calling him a motherfucker in like a nice way. There was the dude who hosted the, the pre-show, Tanner Zipchen. And then after he got let go from Cineplex, he gave an interview where he was like, I didn't even get paid in money. They only paid me in scene points, which is fucking insane, bro. That's not, you can't pay your rent with scene points. Like, you, you can barely pay for a movie with scene points. <laughs> and then they just got rid of time play. Probably they're like, we had to stop it because of the pandemic, because people were touching their phone screens, which is not hygienic. And then they're like, we'll bring it back when, you know, things are better. And then they just never will. So kind of like um, salads at McDonald's. Apparently all the lettuce is tainted or something. Hold, hold. How much do you think Mark Saltzman made doing those tech reviews? Dude, you're, you're bringing up some old memories for me. I haven't seen Mark Saltzman in forever. Dude will be like the new Breville Super Pro Juicer with a built-in pulper and a mulch plug. Okay, hold on. Oh, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Did you see the new I Show Speed song? I was gonna, but I ran out of time doing a deep dive on the stable Ronaldo versus Jinxie drama that's happening right now. There's some seriously heavy stuff going on in this industry, man. Hold. Which side are you on? I just want everybody to get along. Boo. <laughs> okay, start lower so you have less gravitational. That was, that was it, that was it. I can do that. Did you see Kai Sinat get friend zoned by Tyla? Of course, bro. You're talking to a tier three sub. Who's Tyla, by the way? <laughs> oh, hold, hold. Nobody's answering the question. 
She's an R&B artist. Okay. She's not the R&B artist that sang Water, right? That's a different R&B artist with a four-letter name. That is her. I know music, bro. Okay, no, I know her then. I know her. Hold. Hold, hold. Go low so you got less gravitational. Yeah. Incredible. And then this is a, a hell of a jump right here. Oh, we were we were micrometers away. How many subs to get NL to do the dance? The dance, the one that the, the gingerbread man does on the, the smart freezers inside a target? The Gangnam style dance? Was you ever an old Coke Zero Andy? What does this mean? Old Coke Zero. Hold! <laughs> they reformulated it in like 2015? Really? I didn't know that. I, uh, I've been a Coke Zero head ever since it was announced. But I did go through a period, I would say probably like 10 years of basically only drinking a Coke Zero like if I was at a restaurant, which sometimes it happened like 2X weekly, 2X pimpy, 3X bape. Sometimes it happened like once a month. So I, I must have missed the, uh, the reformulation. It must have gone right by me. In no! And a Coke Zero as a treat? Sometimes... Listen, I don't want to cause any problems. Oftentimes, my wife and I would go out for ramen. And it didn't seem like it mattered what the ramen place was. I would be like, yeah, you know, give me... I'll take the classic Rekka ramen. Everything standard. Maybe I'll go Chashu Man on that bitch. Maybe I'll get three extra pieces of pork. Also, I'll have a Diet Coke. And then they say, sure, no problem. And then I wait, you know, eight minutes and the ramen comes out. And then like five minutes after the ramen comes out, they're like, by the way, here's your Coke Zero. And I'm like, where's the, where's the fridge, bro? Why did it take less time to get me soup with cooked meat in it than to get the, the shit that's in the fridge that I can like see with my eyes? It's because Donbo's cooking up their own Coke Zero. <laughs> Were they busy? Of course, it's Donbo. They're always busy. I gotta say, by the way, I swagged up at the... I think Dune 2 got me inspired. My wife and my parents and I went out for uh, ramen. My wife ordered a cold tea. Waited 10 minutes. Hot tea came out. Next time server came around, I said, oh, by the way, my wife ordered a cold tea. I was going fucking Lizan al Gaib mode on it. I was using the voice. They said, sorry, sorry. It kind of, like, listen, it, I wouldn't say it annoyed me, but I was a little surprised. Because they had you order on, like, this paper menu, which I'm sure is to reduce confusion. So my wife circled tea as her drink. And then the server who took it was like, sir, do you want cold tea or hot tea? And I said, my dear, would you like cold tea or hot tea? And she said cold. And then I watched this man write cold down on the piece of paper. Imagine my surprise 10 minutes later when a hot tea came out. Hold. I, like, I, at that point, I just think maybe you got a problem with the ordering system. Mistakes happen, don't get me wrong, but...
Okay, hold. What's the weather like? It's Vancouver, what do you think? <laughs> hold, 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 okay. Get ready to learn it, buddy. That was a hold, bro! Weather was nice yesterday. The weather was nice yesterday. It was gorgeous. Me on NFL Sundays, so true. Nick Bosa watching game footage of the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a hold! Hold. <laughs> I'm not making any other jokes about <laughs> Nick Bosa, okay? The jokes make themselves. Holy shit, we're past the girder? You missed an, an entire other 10-hour arc of general malaise. The girder is, is old trauma, bro. The wheel is, is the newest trauma, and we're past that, too. Do hockey fans say they know puck? Mm, no, I don't believe they do. I don't believe they do. But like nobody actually watches hockey anymore. They just look up like um, player cards on JFresh to win arguments. Watching the games and forming like your own opinion on an entertainment product, like that takes forever, bro. Why do that when instead you could just go Google.com, JFresh, Patrick Laine and be like, see, Patrick Laine is only a 21 this year. Call me crazy. I'd rather have Carson Soucy on my team. Hold. Hold. I just say my team's players are better than their team's players. No, you got it all backwards. In hockey, everybody on your team is a bum. But that being said, at the trade deadline, yeah, they're probably worth a first plus your uh, trading partner's best prospect. Bro, top four defenseman, the asking price is the person that you drafted fourth overall last year plus next year's first. That's what it's going to cost to get Nikita Zadorov, okay? Hold, hold. Did you see the guy yesterday who said Zach Hyman only scored 50 goals because his family is rich? You know what's crazy? I don't mean to insult Zach Hyman. He's, he's ripping it up this year. But there is actually probably a case for that. Hockey has a reputation to begin with for something you can only really get into if your family has means because... The equipment is really expensive compared to something like soccer, for example. And you got to buy new equipment like every year or two. Not to mention the ice time and all the travel involved. Um, so maybe his, his family being rich allowed him to get good at hockey. And then, ipso facto, you find yourself on the Edmonton Oilers power play number one, playing the screen getting fed by uh, Connor McDavid, the best player in human history, and Leon Dreisaitl, like the 93rd best player in human history. I'm not saying he doesn't have talent. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Would you let your daughter play hockey? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would. It just... If she wanted to, I would, but I'm not going to encourage her to do it because I think being a hockey parent is really hard. I had friends in, in high school who played hockey and like in the ninth grade, they would have hockey practice at like 6.15 a.m. So they would do like 90 minutes of hockey practice 
shower, then get on the bus and go to school. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know. And none of those fuckers made the NHL. So, like, the ROI on that was really bad. I'm sure it was rewarding. Don't get me in. They, they had bonding at the same time, but... In high school, I had hockey stuff five days a week. It's, it is crazy. But I think, like, it's all crazy these days, man. Like, my nieces are in fencing, and we literally, like, can't see their parents anymore. Because every weekend, they're like, yeah, we can't do that. We have, like, a fencing tournament. Sometimes the fencing tournament is local. Sometimes it's a state away. Sometimes they're, like, hopping on an airplane to go to the East Coast to... To, to do fencing. I think it's just, if you, if you get like competitive in anything, okay. like any juvenile sport, like people go crazy for it. Hold. Oh. <laughs> Women's fencing equals guaranteed college scholarship. Good choice. I think that's why they got into it in the first place. Was like, you know, their parents are very academically minded. So they're, they're, they're scholastically training my nieces. But also like, uh, you know, if you can get like a back door into a good school via athletics, then that would be good for them. But now I think they just fucking love fencing, bro. Which is great, you know. They're deriving some self-esteem from it. But I am like, man, your parents must be like really tired. You know, work 10 hour days, five days a week, have dinner on Friday night, Saturday morning, 4 a.m., drive like four hours to a fencing tournament, sit in the bleachers for eight hours, sleep in the Holiday Inn Express, sit in the bleachers for eight hours, drive home, go back to work 7 a.m. Monday morning. Like that's, that's dedication, man. And every time I see my brother-in-law, I'm like, how are you doing? And he's like, I'm pretty tired. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> that makes sense. It is family time, though. You're not, you're not wrong about that. Okay, hold. Oh, <laughs> I think I need like two, I need to grab it with both hands or something. You can hold on the ice to slow yourself down. Oh, I could start higher, try to land like on the vertical and then Tomo down. Oh, I, th I think you got it. I think you got to minimize your, your speed, not by minimizing the height of your jump, but rather by having some Tomo tech. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Are you done logging on Letterboxd? Excuse me, I think you'll find that I logged Dune 2, not but three or four days ago. No, not Goon 2, Rise of the Enforcer. What'd you give it? Yeah. Five out of five heart, bro. I think it's a landmark piece of cinema. Hold. Hold. Oh. <laughs> Did any part have you crying? No, I'm, I'm an easy crier in movies, but Dune primed me for different emotions. It kind of primes you for like getting swept up in the fervor instead of like weeping, I think. But any like understated indie drama, like I'm, I'm crying without a doubt. 
But Dune was not like that. Dune is more like, you know, you feel yourself being a Fremen, uh, being incited to start the Holy War. And then after it, you're like, that was sick. And then you start to think about it, and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I, too, am susceptible to propaganda. Oh, we split the uprights, bro. Hold, hold, hold. What'd you think of Barbarian? I liked it a lot. I think I gave it four stars and a heart. It was either a three and a half or a four stars and a heart. Hold. What deep dipped in Fremen spice oil? <laughs> hmm. Oh. Name 100 Fremen. Okay, easy. Uh, Stilgar, uh, Chani, uh, Paul Atreides at a certain point. Um, 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 Chani's friends. Fuck. <laughs> Jamis, thank you, Jamis. Lady Jessica. Well, I don't know. I have to check with the dune heads on that one. Is Lady Jessica considered a Fremen? She was not given a, a Fremen name, or am I mistaken? And she's a Fremen, but she was never given a Fedakin name. Hold. Alia. She might be a Fremen. It depends whether she's born in Fremen territory, right? That's like a, it's a birth certificate situation. I mean, I would say that she's Caledonian, but I mean, it, it depends on the hospital where she ends up popping out, I think. Yes! <laughs> swing, swing from the tables of my heart. Inspired by a... <laughs> Three and a half stars for Banshees of Inner Sharon is kind of criminal. Um, I, I'm just... I, listen, I could do what everybody else does and go, hey, I recognize this movie is beloved, so I'm going to give it a high score even if I'm not vibing with it. I had to be honest. I gave it a, I gave it a three or a three and a half. I like Martin McDonough movies. Me personally, I'm happy you like Banshees of Inner Sharon a lot. My ideal Banshees or my ideal Martin McDonough movie is Three Billboards. You could call me a basic Andy for that if you want, but hello, Daniel. Hello. What, what's the how for? Are you mad because I didn't put some respect on In Bruges? In Bruges is a great movie. I know you love it. That's a tricky situation right there. Never mind, it's an easy situation. Thoughts on Damien Chazelle having two of the two of the what most movies on Letterboxd? I'm just gonna be straight up with you. I haven't seen Babylon, but Whiplash is goaded. And I love La La Land. I, I understand. Hold. <laughs> I understand the cynicism surrounding La La Land. A lot of people have negativity uh, regarding musicals to begin with, or they don't like Ryan Gosling, or they think it's like a movie uh, that Hollywood loves to make movies about Hollywood. Yeah. But all of La La Land for me is great. The last 30 minutes of, of La La Land is like transcendental. Yeah. 
Dan turned off your stream. I actually, I don't even understand what he's mad about. Is he, is he a, a La La Land hater or is he upset that I'm goaded, bro? He's upset that you're goaded? <laughs> I don't even know like what I, what I did that, that got to him. Like, none of this stuff, I mean, it doesn't seem like it even holds a candle to the freaking, the wheel, bro. The wheel was a, was a nightmare. Okay, we got to pick a path here. Chib talking about Jackbox. <laughs> Hold, hold, hold. He did have 4,000 points yesterday. I'm not even knocking him. I think he, he did okay on the questions in the first round, but then the wheel screwed him, and it's just like, it's hard to recover from, from the wheel saying like, today's not your day, you know? I've been there. Hold. A little, a little closer to this side. Thank you. The hell is this? Lady Jessica's pacifier? Ooh, hold. Tell me you're holding without telling me you're holding. <clears throat> This is the jump I'm stuck on. Okay, good, good intel. So I know how to manage expectations. At some point I'm gonna have to pee. But the piss has been very helpful so far. Close. Hold, hold here then. Okay, I gotta go pee. It just has to be done. I'll be back in just, a, I'm gonna rush it. I'll be back in 71 seconds. Sorry, I got a Coke Zero too. I got to be honest, I also, I, I took a little longer than expected. Because I put deodorant on. It's been a sweaty stream so far. First I had to beat the misogyny allegations. And then we've been, I mean, this is, it's not called an easy game about climbing. Re-deodorant. I mean, listen. I don't feel great about putting deodorant on, on top of sweat, but it's either that or take a shower like right now, which is not going to happen. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Here's my thoughts on it. 
if you get to the, if you can reodorant the sweat in under like 90 minutes, you're going to be okay. But you can't like go to bed, like take a shower, have a day, go to bed, wake up and be like, I smell and then put deodorant on on top of that. That smell is already baked in to the skin. You need to do like a, a skin reset in the shower. Oh, that was close. Tomo technology, that's fine. Just wash your pits. It, I, I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't take. You can't just wash your armpits. It was like by the time you just wash your armpits, you might as well have just gotten in the shower and taken like a two minute shower. Because, like, if you're taking your shirt off in the sink and then just putting, like, water on your hand and going like this, like, that your pants are getting dirty, you got, you know, like, water stains on your khakis and stuff like that, you might as well have just taken, like, the extra 15 seconds to completely disrobe, hop in the shower, like, soap up for real, get out and dry off, like. Hold. Just use a washcloth. Maybe you got, like, maybe you're not a real stinker. I think if you buy, if you take a shower, I, I won't say you, I'll say me. If I take a shower, the armpits are good for 23 hours. They're good till the next shower. If I try to just, like, rub a washcloth on already pre-stunk pits, it buys you 45 minutes at most. And you don't get the, the base level of freshness that you get in the shower. In an emergency, it's better than nothing. But it doesn't give you the same kind of refractory period that a shower does. It's a two-hand jump. I'll do my best. You also have to think, like... Hang on. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah. We got a lot of momentum on that. You may be right. Whoa! <laughs> You've also got to think, like, I'm not particularly tall, but I'm like, I don't know, I'm probably 45th percentile adult male height. But that puts me like 70th percentile, or maybe, I might even put me like 90th percentile for women's height. So, like, my nose is fairly far away from my armpits. But if I'm, like, walking through a crowd or something like that, there's going to be people whose noses are passing by at, like, armpit height. So I, I really try to maintain my, my hygiene. You know, for the good of society. What are you doing differently in a shower than with a washcloth? Well, I don't know. A washcloth has like four milliliters of water on it. I can probably send like eight liters of water down my armpits. Then the all-in-one cold brew coffee plus energy drink plus soap plus shampoo plus conditioner plus moisturizer on top of that. Then you put another eight liters of water on top of that. Dipped in. So true. So true. Dipped in. So you love wasting water? Yeah? I suppose. Hold. Giga Chad? I'm not going to let chat get on my case for wasting water. My showers are fucking short. Because I don't have any hair. So I'm guaranteeing that I use less water in the shower than you. Now, overall, I don't know. I couldn't tell you, okay? I'm not going to get into like a carbon footprint off. I've been on too many cruises in the past few years. But showers specifically, I'm not willing to be shower shamed. I don't, I don't think this is a too handy. Just being honest. Whoa. 
I'm dead. Like, like he has passed away. I don't know where to go, man. I don't know where to go. I feel like I'd, I'd rather go this way because I know it's at least safe down here. <laughs> I don't know. The other way might have taken me down a, a tunnel that could lead me back to the girder for all I know. So right, we go again. It's not even noon yet. We're doing so much better. <clears throat> hold, hold. Yeah. Is he named 100 women yet? Blink and you'll miss it. What'd you have for breakfast? You're really cooking today? Costco protein bar, uh, original bagel with Philadelphia herb and garlic cream cheese, and one banana. Okay, an attempt was made. I honestly can't get down. I'm not calling anybody out, but I couldn't get down with the... Um, the discussion yesterday where like all of my friends that I played Jackbox with admitted that they don't eat breakfast and they're trying to like convince each other that not eating breakfast is the way I'm here to tell you it was before you got there Sim Victor. they were all like yeah I don't eat breakfast I don't eat breakfast I don't eat breakfast it's better that way everybody's different but like I would recommend it is all I'm gonna say I stopped eating breakfast in college. Yeah, but you'll start again. I stopped eating breakfast in college too, because sometimes you fucking wake up at like 1.30 p.m. But once you actually have like a not cooked sleep schedule, you may find yourself returning to the breakfast minds. I just have a shake. I got news for you, brother. You're on my team. That's breakfast. I never went back. Info request, how old are you? Because if you're like, I never went back and you're 23, what do you mean you never went back? You never left, brother. That was good. It was actually too good. I never went back. I'm 35. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Everybody's different, but you're wrong. Eating breakfast is good. But I'm not hungry? Well, in that case. But like, do you ever think that you're not hungry because you don't eat breakfast? Like, you're not hungry because your body is like, why even send the hungry signal? Like, he's going to ignore it anyway. I'd skip lunch before I skip breakfast. You wouldn't... No, no, no. That's false. See, I don't want you on my team. Because I think, I think you're being disingenuous. If you ate breakfast, you can't skip lunch. Because as soon as you eat, you started the food treadmill for your body for the day. If you eat breakfast, you have to eat lunch or your body will punish you. It's easier to skip breakfast because you've already fasted for like 8 to 10 hours by the time breakfast rolls around. So all you got to do proportionally is, you know, send it for like another few hours. You would not catch me eating breakfast, skipping lunch, eating dinner. I would much rather skip breakfast, but I'm going to eat all three. And in fact, I'll probably have a couple of snacks throughout the day as well. What are we having for lunch today? Original bagel, sliced cucumber, little deli turkey. Dijon mustard, 
my parents left me a bunch of vegetables. I'll probably just try to throw as many vegetables as possible on top of the... Oh! On top of the... Uh, the bagel just to get rid of them. Two bagels a day? I'm a two bagel a day, Andy. Yeah. The first one, I honestly... Not to be, like, glib. The first one doesn't count because it just gets burned up on the bike. Like by the time the ride's over. The second one counts, I'll allow that. Fasted workouts go crazy. No disrespect, if you step to me in a Peloton race and I've had a bagel with cream cheese and a banana before the ride even starts and you're working off 12 hours fasted, your ass is gonna be back there with hashtag Pelo for wine. You're not gonna be up with the rest of the egg carton. That's fine. That's fine. If you're exercising exclusively to lose weight, I understand the idea of, of fasted cardiovascular exercise. But, I mean, if we're talking about performance, you're in for a world of hurt. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. I intermittent fast. My FTP is 293. Okay, what's your weight? Don't just be posting FTP. Can I get some watts per kilogram ratio? 293 is really good. I'm not insulting that. But like, are you, are you posting a 293 at 175 pounds? In which case, like, I'll see you on the tour to fucking France. Or are you posting a 293 at like 250 pounds? That's a different story. Still good. Don't get me wrong. Hold. I'm not body shaming. If anything, you're food shaming me. You're saying I beat your stats because, uh, you know, I'm just better than you. I don't need a bagel in the morning. Okay, try driving your car without gasoline in it, bro. 6'4", 225% body fat. Listen, you so-and-so. <laughs> Oh, that's the Giesling jump, right? Ooh. What's your VO2 max, though? I don't know. I've never done that. Um, I've never done the test where they hook you up to the tenant machine. What's the tenant machine? You know how they have to have like a respirator in tenant? Because when time runs in reverse, air runs in reverse too. So you have to breathe forward air. <laughs> Yay. Man, I love tenant. Me too. Genuinely. It sounds so stupid when you describe it. Yeah, I know. But it's like, I don't know. It's crazy to me that there are fans of anime out there who have a problem with Tenet. Because as far as I'm concerned, Tenet is just like Chris Nolan anime. Like some of the shit that you accept in like, you know, One Piece or Dragon Ball Z, then in Tenet all of a sudden you're like, oh, the air molecules go backwards so you can't breathe them. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like you got to suspend your disbelief, bro. You're not treating it fairly. I just wish I could hear what they're saying. That's true. I think, like, I, I watched it on Netflix, and it seemed like the mixing wasn't that bad. But Chris Nolan does have, like, a, a, a problem with audio for whatever reason. That'd be, you know, I checked my uh, YouTube analytics because for tax purposes, I had to figure out what percentage of my audience is watching from Canada. So thanks a lot, Canadian viewers. You're costing me fucking GST, bro. I don't, know, I don't know the precedent for it in the law. I just do what my accountant tells me to do, okay? American viewers, keep up the great work. Canadian viewers, may, could I interest you in a foreign streamer, please? <laughs> I'm just joking. It's not a big deal. Uh, but when I was looking at my analytics, 
it shows you like, um, you know, the audio settings for, for viewers. I couldn't believe only 5% of people are watching with subtitles. But now that I think about it, I guess it's because the only subtitles I have are the YouTube auto-generated ones. Which are not good. Yeah, I was thinking of it as if it was like those are curated subtitles. Because I, I watch everything with subtitles on. Wee. No cap? No cap. I watch everything with subtitles. You know what you will never hear coming out of my mouth? What did he just say? It's not going to happen. I, I'm, I hate to do this. This is going to blow up a lot of people's spots out there. Sometimes you'll be watching a movie and you'll hear what someone says, but the person you're watching the movie with will go, what did they say? Every single time, I just go, I don't know, I didn't really hear him. Even if I heard him, I'm like, I don't want to repeat what he said, because then like, I'm going to miss part of the movie. <laughs> same, 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 same. You have to be careful, though. Think you can get away with that with like your, your partner? If you try pulling that shit on your dad, he's hitting the rewind button. But then even though it's only 10 seconds ago, he gets impatient. So he mashes the rewind button like eight times. And then it goes backwards at minus 32 X speed. And you're back at like the, the DVD menu. And you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Takes you like 10 minutes to get back to the, the part that you were at. Dad starts up the... DVD. It starts with an establishing shot with the credits over top. Brothers already got it on 64x speed. You, you miss like the whole first act of the movie. You already saw like four characters get their heads blown off and then he's hitting you, he's going all the way back and your mom's going, honey. Okay, hold. Aren't you a dad though? I'm a dad, but I respect skin, uh, cinema. <laughs> I'm a dad, but I respect cinema. I don't, uh, I don't fast forward. I mean, the credits are there. They're part of the movie, bro. Now, I, if the credits come at the end, I'm leaving the theater. But if the credits come, you know, at the beginning of the movie, that's part of setting the stage, bro. They're playing a song that's designed to take you from the mood that you were in on your way to the movie theater into like a, a susceptible state to appreciate the movie. Huge, huge. Any Balatro today? If we climb this mountain, even if we don't climb the mountain, we're probably doing Balatro today. Yes, yes. Gold stake is kicking my ass. It's a hard game. It's a very hard game. Gold stay got all over my brain. Excuse me. Fade Routha be like, excuse me while I kiss this guy. He's his uncle. Anyway. Yep. Oh, ass, ass. Now we need to use Tomo technology. Have you seen three mics? I haven't seen three mics, but I have seen Neil Brennan's special after that, Blocks. I thought Blocks was pretty good, but I do have to say it's not really his fault. I think I'm, I'm reaching the point right now where I'm kind of like less interested in like elevated stand-up comedy and more interested in people just being funny. 
I've, I've gone through the, the phase, and when you, there's a truly transcendent stand-up special that's a little more serious as well, it can definitely hit, like, like Mike Birbiglia's best stuff. But there is a lot of, like, stand-up comedy that's kind of, like, bordering on self-help philosophy sometimes with jokes intermixed. And sometimes it hits, but when it doesn't hit, I'm like, what are we doing here? Can't you just, like, make up a story about something that happened to you at the airport where you're the good guy? Oh, hold. Your main comedy is Silly Voices? I know. If, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Remember Dimitri Martin? I think Dimitri Martin's a funny guy. Like, the stuff that he was making in the 2000s, it was just a different time, man. It was, just, it was when you could be the funniest guy in your high school for having a shirt that has Lenin, Stalin, Trotsky, and Karl Marx on it, getting drunk. And then when people are like, I don't get your shirt, you'd be like, brother, it's the Communist Party. Threadless Andes were going crazy back then. I had that shirt. Everybody had that shirt, man. It came for free with your fucking nine gag account. I know how it is. <laughs> I bought that as a poster from the DC Spy Museum. Dude, so I, you know, I've been traveling a little bit. I've been going to gift shops. Is there anything like more depressing than going to like a gift shop at a museum or a historical site and fucking nobody is buying anything related to like the sanctity of what the museum's about and everybody is instead just buying like break open this geode and see what's inside and fucking like like I, th I thought about that when I was at the Kennedy Space Center and like all the shit that was like you know astronauts are heroes there was nobody in front of it at all but then all the like supreme t-shirt but it says NASA instead of supreme people were like yeah it's their money, don't get me wrong. I guess I'm just being a hater. The flip side is when we went to the Pearl Harbor historical sites and everyone was buying like t-shirts with mushroom clouds over Japan. And they were like, honey, honey, it's buy four, get one free. Do you want XL or double XL? And do you want the one that has uh, Harry Truman's face and says these colors don't run? Or do you have the one that says, you want the one that says uh, December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. And it has FDR giving the middle finger in front of the American flag. Cold. Was that one real? There's some slight embellishment, but there were a lot of, I don't know if you'd call them novelty t-shirts. They were moving a lot of t-shirts at the Pearl Harbor Historic Sites gift shop last October. Not to mention the exclusive Hello Kitty Pearl Harbor Historic Sites souvenirs. Who you got for the 2024 election? Uh, I think David, David Eby is going to win in a landslide, personally. Well, is there another election happening? I don't really want to talk about it. Editor's note, David Eby is the current premier of British Columbia, representing the New Democrats. Representing the New Democrats! Coming in at 6 foot 3, 178 pounds! We're so back. You got to get past the median. Not that far. Not that far. Right there. Tomotech. Great Tomotech. Great Tomotech. <clears throat> Pierre's going to win. 
Yeah, but like that shit is probably not going to be. Well, I guess it could be 2024, depending on when a vote of non confidence comes in. For uh, Americans, the Canadian system works a little differently. We used to have elections every four years, but for like the last 12 years, we have elections every uh, 18 months to 36 months. Basically, at some point, the government just says, we're tapping out, let's go again. Oh, okay, Tomotech, Tomotech, hold. That vote already happened, though. Well, yeah, like three years ago, right? When was the last federal election? It's got to be 2021, maybe, maybe 2022. Hold. Hold. There was a federal? Yeah, we've had federal elections in the past. I like that in Canada, there's a limit to the length of the campaign. I think it's like a lot of stuff. It's great in principle. But what it actually means in real life is like the, the good faith argument of it gets perverted. Like now it's just, it's a campaign 24-7, 365. Like, yeah, they're not in the middle of a campaign right now. But basically, as soon as like all the leaders have gotten selected for the political parties, like every day is a campaign. One hand swing. Two hops this time. That might have done it. That might have done it. Wasn't even close, bro. Tomotech. Okay, a little, little slip on the wrist and I'm on a ride. You're toxic, I'm slipping up. America's every two to four years, depending on how Nate Silver you are. It's so true. Iowa District 11 is having a runoff in 18 months. Hold. Hold. Ludwig was a two-hand Andy for this. The thing for me with the, with the two-hand Andy, I, I can't get the launch right on the two-hander because I always end up doing like a, a backflip. Tomotech, Tomo, Tomotech. Yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm a local politics Andy, but I'm not like a freak about it. Like I'm not going to the city council meetings and like trying to get somebody disbarred as comptroller. I just don't know what's going on. But I vote in the, in the municipal elections. I'm a, I'm a municipal, provincial, federal Andy. I'm a lyrical, physical, feminine, lesbian Eminem. Getting sunshine in my perennium. Singing about the new millennium. Harrison Ford under the floorboards. <laughs> For four door Ford Explorer. Oh, okay, we're, we're slipping up, but we got some serious momentum there. Are these real Eminem verses? Yep. It's from uh, Stan. A song known as Stan. I think it's easier one handed. Me talking about uh, tennis backhands. Hold, 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 hold. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 
Two-handed Andes could never. So true. Pete Sampras ass. Bisexual Morpheus. Talking two-handed backhands with Anna Kornikova. Harrison Ford under the floorboards of your four-door Ford Explorer. Lyrical. Spiritual, feminine, lesbian, Eminem. <laughs> Please. Please. Hold. Oh, there was some serious height on that one. Baron Harkonnen dipped in Mama Liz's oil, oil. I gotta see Dune Part 1 again, man. I don't know if it's just people trolling, but Kate was talking about... And it, Librarian said this, but then also another person said it independently. She was talking about Dune Part 2 to her chat. And two people in chat, one of which was Librarian, one of which was another person, said, do I have to see Dune Part 1 to understand Dune Part 2? Yes. Yes, you do. And honestly, you should be like happy to, that there's two movies because the first one's really good too. But you absolutely have to see the first one to understand the second one or you are going to be fucking confused. Or you, true, you could read the first half of the book instead. That one was not even close. Tomotech. I was already confused and I saw the first one. Me too. But I like when movies do that. At least, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a plot Andy. <laughs> I guess I am in some ways. But I'm more of like a how does this movie make me feel Andy. Like my wife started asking me great questions about the movie. After we watched it. And I was like, I never thought about it that way, but I had a great time. She was like, well, why would the emperor give Arrakis to uh, Paul Atreides' father if he was worried about the Atreides becoming too powerful? And I was like, fuck, I never thought about it that way. Then I Googled it really quick, and I was like, well, by giving uh, Arrakis to the Atreides, it actually created a situation where they could easily do like a false flag operation where nobody could possibly... Anyway... It's not spoilers, it's in the first four minutes of the first movie. <clears throat> okay, hold. It's also a book from 1912. So true. This one's for you, Dan Giesling viewers. Thank you for the raid, Daniel. Thank you for the raid. Dan, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not in a race with you. We're, we're both in a race against ourselves. This is hard, man. This is, it's, they don't call it a simple game about climbing. And I will say, I probably have more playtime in the game than Dan now. Because Dan has definitely played it for more streams. But sometimes Dan plays like seven games per stream. So every game gets like you know, 42 minutes. Hold, hold. We're holding. He has over 30 hours in it. But does he have 30 hours of playtime? Or does he have like 18 hours of playtime and then 12 hours of leaving the game open after he left his office? Which I'm not criticizing him for, because I do that all the time as well. Oh! We were closing in on that one. It's not Sean's fired! A lot of people out there are allergic to histamines, so we can't close our games. 
perhaps we should get like a, a rotating series of volunteers that could like pro bono come to our house and close our games for us for days when we just don't have the mental energy to, to close our games. Hold. Hold. Next time, we get him next time. <laughs> People are still arguing about DoorDash on my timeline. I love it, man. The DoorDash discourse, I, I fall for it every single time. People, I'm sorry, listen, I have some sympathy for it. But when people are like, it's actually harder than you would expect to make a microwave meal. You got to open up the box, take the shit out. Sometimes you got to grab a fork and poke holes in the plastic. Sometimes you got to, the microwave controls can be very overwhelming. Sometimes you have to cook it for 90 seconds and then take it out and give it a stir and then you got to put it back in and you've already thrown the box in the garbage you got to take the box out of the garbage which is not sanitary and i'm like oh fuck brother <laughs> no disrespect okay if i work for the irs every single person that tweets that is getting audited tomorrow because i do not believe that if, the, if they can't do the frozen meals they simply are not paying their taxes or at least filing them because it's not it's just not happening I, I there's no world in which you're like it's hard to make michelinas but you're submitting your taxes on time that's a guaranteed audit if i worked at the irs Caught, caught, caught. I'm not trying to out anybody. Maybe you live in a country where they file the taxes for you, which I'm actually very jealous of, but they probably pay someone to do it. Yeah, but then you got to send them like the fucking PDFs and the documents and you got to collate all this shit from your bank and stuff like that. Like it's, it's harder than making Marie Collins chicken pot pies is all I'm trying to say, bro. Hold. I filed my taxes today. I feel bad. Um, this is a true story. I, I mean, honest, I've, I know I've said it before. I actually think that accountants are like some of the biggest heroes in our society in some ways, mostly because they're doing work that I don't have the qualifications or the desire to do. So I'm, I'm putting mad respect on the accountants. That being said, sometimes my behaviors and my words don't match up. My accountant sent me a request for more information it's probably like the first week of March. I put off replying to it for two and a half weeks. Then yesterday, I was like, I got to get on this shit. It took me less than 10 minutes to grab all the documents that he asked me for. I sent them back. He sent me an email. At, so that email came out at like 4 p.m. My accountant then replied to me at like 11.48 p.m. And was like... Here's how much you owe. Please send it to the government before Friday. Like the dude literally was waiting on like. <laughs> he just needed me to take 10 minutes out of my day to get a few PDFs. And I he's just dragging my heels. Every fucking reply starts with sorry for the delay as usual. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm not I'm not proud of it. It's just it's just the way it went down, man. But can I tell you something? This doesn't necessarily it doesn't atone for it completely. But when I get the invoice, there's no net fucking 45. There's no net 60. I pay that shit the second I see the email. That's how I show my appreciation, okay? We're not doing any accounts payable, accounts receivable, accounting fiction. I'm not getting the 30-day GIC that pays 0.03% so I can skim a little bit off the top. That shit's getting paid immediately. <clears throat> next time. Next, we get him next time. Do you tip 20%? 
No, I feel like with accountants, the tip is built in. I'm not saying they're lying. I think this is just the way the government, or not the government, but all business works. The billable hours, I know you weren't nose to the grindstone for every minute of every billable hour. There's a little gentleman's sort of fudge factor that goes into it. If you worked for 38 minutes and you checked your phone two times and you took a bathroom break, that's a billable hour. There's, that, that's, there's your tip. There's your 20% tip right there. I'm not going to observe you and be like, hey, 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 that you only actually worked for 31 minutes on that billable hour. I trust you. And then in return, you don't fire me as a client when I'm a little late sending you documents sometimes. It's the way of the world, man. Next time. <clears throat> I started subtracting bathroom breaks from my invoices and it's been a dream. All right, we go again. <laughs> Why, why are you subtracting your, your bathroom breaks from your invoices? You got a piss to work. Oh, not subtracting. Okay, all right, all right. I misread it completely. As long as you're not taking too many liberties with it, your, your piss time, that's part of your working time, bro. I get paid during my piss breaks. I'm a lawyer and I bill when I'm in the shower because my shower thoughts are work thoughts. <laughs> Listen, if you work on the file for 45 minutes and take a 15 minute shower pondering, I think that's a billable hour. If you wake up at 6.30 in the morning, take a shit and then hop in the shower for 30 minutes, that's not a billable half hour in my world. But that's, who's, gonna, who's gonna keep you honest though? I don't hate you for it. I'm just saying. Hold. I do it. I, I, I have a, a suggestion to fix the tax code, by the way. But it's, it goes without saying. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't know probably the most fucked up shit in the tax code. I'll give you that. But I'll tell you one thing for free. We got to stop letting businesses write off a portion of dinner receipts because they talked about business. It's just that how, how many tens of millions of dollars annually is lost in revenue just because of lies, bro. You go out and have like seven beers with a client, all of a sudden, like, half of that shit comes tax-free? Like, how does that make sense? It, do it simply doesn't make sense. You just say that because you don't get business dinners? Well, listen, maybe I'm the fool. But, like, at a certain point, you know, I, like, my accountant is like, what's this, like, $110 receipt? And I was like, oh, we were at PAX East and we went out to Legal Seafoods. Did you talk about work? Well, yeah, I guess. But like, I don't know. I just kind of don't want to risk it. I, it. I don't want to be six years after the dinner and have Justin Trudeau be like, so what would you guys talk about? I'll be like, Fuck it. I don't know, brother. This was a long time ago. We were hammered. <laughs> How would they know? It just seems like, a, I don't know. I, I feel like it's against the spirit of the game, man. Because, like, at some point, technically, like, I'm self-employed. Like, if you use that logic, can't you just write off, like, your whole fucking life? I was talking about it with Justin. You know, like, we, as streamers, we should be able to write off all of our expenses related to pets. Because if we don't buy our pets pet food and they die of starvation, we're going to lose our jobs in the court of public opinion. So as far as I'm concerned, that shit's, that shit should be writing it off, bro. But I don't do that. This is actually the first year in a while where I um, didn't, or I, I did collate my steam expenses for the year. 
Because, like, the past few years, I've been like, I'm not going through every damn receipt for a $6.99 indie game. That's crazy. Then this year, I found out there's literally a button in Steam that is just like, here's all your purchases this year. <laughs> and I was like, all right, that I'll do. That I will do. Ryan, you don't get it. This isn't like a, a streamer, like out of touch thing. This is just the way like this. This is real world shit, bro. How much was it? I don't know. I probably spent like 1300 bucks on Steam last year. But like, I'm not going to start putting on like, you know, dinners on the at the fucking McDonald's or something on the taxes. Because then for two hundred dollars at McDonald's, my accountant's got to look at that shit and then for some reason they take the receipts and they write them into their own document which probably takes them 15 minutes then they like print to pdf and put it in like a an encrypted archive and then all of a sudden to claim that 200 dollars of mcdonald's i just paid like 180 dollars to my accountant <laughs> Which I love it for him, because then he's buying shit in the economy and keeping the world going around. I'm just saying you got to look at the, the economics of it sometimes. Hold. Hold. Scurry. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't hate accountants. It's the opposite. I think they're heroes, which is why I think they, I don't, I'm not saying they do, but I think they should be able to take liberties. Because I think it's kind of, I don't know, that's how like a service-based economy works, right? For certain professions, you pay them like, you know, X dollars per hour, but realistically they were there for an hour, but they were only focusing for like 18 minutes. It's that little fiction in there that keeps the, that keeps the world turning around. Me as a software engineer? I hear you. I mean, it's crazy, right? I never worked in like a, a serious white collar job. I basically did like admin. But even then, there were days where like there wasn't shit to do. You still got paid. <laughs> and then if someone's like, what did you do today? You're like, I've been working on this file for like eight hours. It's not a lie. You were working on the file for eight hours because you didn't have shit else to do, man. Oh. Hold. Not me using a mouse jiggler on MS Teams, so it seems like I'm working more. Productivity software is fucked up. And I, I don't know. Maybe people are going to say that I'm just trying to farm base. But I think the onus for you to notice that I'm not doing work is on like my, my manager. Right? If you don't notice based on my output that I'm not working as hard or as long as I could be, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing what was asked of me. I'm performing adequately because you're not noticing how bad I am at my job. If you need a piece of software to tell you like, oh, you know, he didn't move his mouse for 90 minutes today. Well, really, like the software should have your job. No disrespect. It's a really easy take to farm plus twos with, though, because like there's no managers in chat. <laughs> They're all at the golf course. <laughs> Hold. I, I don't know. I guess I... Maybe it's naive. But I kind of like harken back to like, or I, I mythologize living in a, I don't want to say a less scientific, but maybe like a less 
analytic era. Where like, if you were a little bit bad at your job, what were the consequences? You work at the company for 45 years, you get a retirement party, they give you a gold watch. You go eat at a restaurant, what do you say? Hey, this food was pretty good. You don't say, oh yeah, it's really, it's pretty good, but I've had better egg foo young at uh, this place. And then, oh no, actually a lot of people are talking about this new restaurant's got a lot of buzz down and blah, blah, blah. Like you just, you know, like back before the information age, people were just sending it, bro. They didn't have the tools to, to not send it. I'm about the 90s max on getting lunch. Dude, I hear you. Go to a restaurant that has their menu in Comic Sans. He's Ted Kaczynski posting again. I'm not Ted Kaczynski posting, okay? I'm not saying you have to hand it to him. Don't you remember? I got in trouble with my chat for saying Ted Kaczynski was a bad dude. I was like, regardless of his political opinions, I don't think you should blow people up with bombs. And people were like, bad take. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What about Hitler? Okay, you can blow Hitler up with a bomb. You know, I so NL lore that you probably already know if you've been watching for a while. Every night to fall asleep, I listen to an audiobook. The audiobook is The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. I'm at the part for like the 17th time because I've I've read well, listened to this like 70-hour book so many times because I've been listening to it for like 7 years. I'm at the part where they're doing the Von Stauffenberg plot to kill Hitler. And I get that they were like working their ass off to kill Hitler, but it really seems like they fucking sucked at it. Like nobody could just take a gun and kill him. Like it took a hundred dudes making like a massive conspiracy and then they're like built a bomb and put it into a briefcase and then they were like, no, 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 we can't do it today because we won't get... Goebbels and fucking Goring. We want to get like a, a triple. So they said, okay, take the briefcase back out. And then they had like, they, they finally got the bomb to explode, but somebody moved it next to like a, a really thick table leg. So like it only kind of flesh wounded him. Like, you, no disrespect. You know, you're like, it's probably like a self sack move. They couldn't have just shot him. I guess they just, they wanted to have some self-preservation as well, but like, what's up with the Looney Tunes shit, bro? Did you hear about the Fidel Castro shit? They tried to blow him up with a cigar bomb. What the fuck, man? <laughs> that's true, that's, okay, so they did want to eliminate like the entire brass and then like have a military coup happens to ensure that it wasn't just like a transfer of power i do understand i guess i understand that when you're listening that, like it's the longest chapter in the book it's like four hours and 15 minutes long and it's basically about them getting like cold feet and then like when they actually do it like one dude is just like what's this briefcase doing here and he just moves it to the other side of the room bro Why are you on the same book? I don't know. I'm a routine-driven Andy. And uh, it's interesting to, you know, learn. So when, you, when you're born, it's like arriving at a party that's been going on for, like, millennia, right? So sometimes you're like, why has that dude got a lampshade on his head? Why does this country have borders that look like this? So you learn history, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's, that's, that shit all happened, like, before I got here. It gives you, like, some more context for the world in which you live. Why 
Why are you reading it again? Why are you, why are you policing? My, you've probably read fucking The Wheel of Time like 17 times. All of a sudden, the bro wants to learn something about human history, and it's troubling. Go back to fucking having wet dreams about Galadriel, bozo. Did you hear a man scream there? <laughs> Have you read any 21st century novels? What an insane question. Yes. Halo, the fall of reach. Also, the old men in the sea, or the old man in the sea. Also, Handmaid's Tale. Also, Slaughterhouse Five. Also 1984, also Animal Farm, also Of Mice and Men, also To Kill a Mockingbird, also Brave New World, fucking also probably, oh, no, oh, 20th, <laughs> you didn't say 20th century, you said 21st. Halo, The Fall of Reach. That probably came out in like 2003. Hold. Well, this sucks ass. <laughs> 2001. Let's go! <laughs> I've read 20, 21st century nonfiction. Morgan Housel's The Psychology of Money. I, that's true, I have read House of Leaves. That must be a 21st century, Andy. A random walk down Wall Street? That's just from 1977. Put some respect on Burden Malkiel. Thoughts on everyone just reading Smut now? My thought is, who cares, I guess. I don't know, it, I don't consider it a big deal. Who the fuck is everyone? <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. It's 12, okay, we should, we should drop it and then play some Balatro. Still made good progress today. Slash marker. A difficult game. I don't think there's anything wrong with reading like a smut or a romance novel or whatever. Who cares? Doesn't bother me. Not my cup of tea. I gotta be more efficient with my arousal. Just don't have a lot of free time right now. I can't afford to be spending like two hours getting horny. It's more like a kind of like get in, get out type situation. Maybe at some point though, who knows? Do they write romance novels for, for men? That's gotta be like a 98% women dominated genre. Visual novels. Oh, you're so right. Visual novels and manga. Sorry, librarian. Sorry, I forgot about the manga. Meet and fuck kingdom, Steve. Okay, Balatro. We really got 10K viewers for a difficult game about climbing. We're used to like... 6K. You know, 4K people thought that the Name 100 Women Challenge was happening after this. I'm sorry to report. You missed it. You missed it right at the start of the stream. I'm sorry. We did it too fast. You ever take an, ad an Addy before cranking your hog? No. Um... Those are two things I've never done, even separate, much less at the same time. The internet has me believing that every person 
is maybe not on drugs, but has like drug experience. Can I get a, and I'm just, let's let the chat percolate out here for a second. I want to get like a, a scientific poll. If you've ever taken Adderall type one, if you've never taken Adderall type two, I've never taken Adderall. I'm eyeballing it. I'm saying, I'm saying 15% Adderall. See, based on the internet, I would have thought that it would have been like 70% of people had taken an Adderall. Okay, now let's we, we percolate it out a little bit. Percolate it out. One, if you've ever taken ketamine. Two, if you've never taken ketamine. See, now that shit is like 10%. I would have thought, based on the internet, I would have thought it was like 40% ketamine users in chat. We're learning something here. One in chat if you've ever had a cup of coffee, two if you've never had a cup of coffee. Oh, there we go. Now we go fucking caffeine addicts. No wonder fucking collective chat blood pressure is so high. Everyone in the chat's on caffeine, bro. <laughs> okay, one in chat if you've ever had sugar, two in chat if you've never had sugar. That's a lot of twos. You guys should try it. It tastes pretty good. Okay, slash marker, Balatro. We're so back in Balatro. This game's getting hard, man. Don't I don't even want to talk about that. What do we have anything that's not on like a crazy stake? Oh my god, just let me do yellow deck, man. Maybe we got a chance here with the blue stake yellow deck. Polychrome Andrew. On a yellow deck, we take those for sure. And then uh 450 points. I mean, when you start with this kind of situation right here, I'm fishing for a straight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Did you see the 34 Joker run? I did not see the 34 Joker run. I'm intrigued though. 34 Jokers? That if they got to make a sequel to The Flash, that probably would have been the plot. Google Balatro rule 34. Come on, man. Don't do me like that. Look at this. This is beautiful, man. A hollow constellation and a polychrome half joker early. Like, these both seem incredible. I would buy both and then, like, look to play three of a kind for the time being. Or full house. No, three of a kind. So we get the, the 20 molt. Okay, three of a kind, please. It's a 2,000 point hand. And then we just get our... Yeah, that's the way. Get um, get sorted, economically speaking, and then buy Celestial Packs as the day is long. Well, I'll buy Mars, but... What are these drop rates? I You, honestly, like... We've gotten insanely lucky to start with on this run, but I can still definitely throw. And secondarily, you just have to trust me on this one. I certainly have had my share of shit luck. Like I, I did a run, I think it was last night. And um, like I skipped the first blinds for Polychrome Joker. And then I did like the next four blinds, but I was playing as whatever the deck is that uh, it doubles the odds of tarot cards and doubles the odds of planets appearing in the shop. So I had like four shops in a row that had no jokers and you can't afford to reroll and then also buy a polychrome joker because your econ is so fucked. And I just, at some point it was like shop four or five, I just held R and said, fuck you, man. Like I, I there's no jokers. I can't win with no jokers. I'm saving up. I'm, I, we don't need to spend immediately. Save up, get your econ sorted, get your money up, stop being a broke boy. And then once your econ is under control, 
guess we should play evens when given the choice. Once your econ's under control, buy celestial packs and planets every single shop. And we're going to the moon. You know what? I think we can afford it. I'm going to send it. We will do this, though. Easy mode. What did I tell you? The big dollar bala. That's me. That's what they call me. I'm going to let it go for one more. We'll go king, king. Two hands, kind of embarrassed, but it is what it is. No jokers, it's like the Dark Knight Rises in here. True, true. That's the one with Bane, I recall. I know, I'm a doctor too. I would love to immolate and have some money. Thank you so much. And then a buffoon pack. And sure, I don't know if we'll be playing face cards, but it's a cheap joker. I'm not getting an eternal egg joker. That seems insanely bad. That's the same joker. You insult me. I will buy a fool card. Zero discards. We shouldn't be at risk, but it's one of those things where it's like, you never know, man. You never know. Two fours should be pretty solid. Two jacks. It's going to be chipped up, man, like me at a party. We take these. <clears throat> Ignoring seed money? Well, you got to you got to spend money to live too, you know. Now, this is where it should start to pop off. Oh, a hermit card. Don't mind if I do. Now, do I fool a hermit card? Mm, I would say I'd think about it. Let me just take a peek at this for a second. I'm going to and then I'm going to Mercury, and then I'm gonna Hermit, and then I'm gonna get some free tarot cards. Hey, Anel, any thoughts on Bingle Bangle, the Roulette Balatro? I, my question is, B-Cop, is it good or is it bad? I, and you don't have to answer by saying, is it as good as Balatro? Because I don't expect it to be as good as Balatro. It's in early access. To me, that doesn't seem like a fair comparison. It's not as good, but it's fun. I might give it a try. I might give it a chance. I do love an invisible joker. I do. I cannot tell a lie. At some point, we need to start getting more points, but 20 bucks is kind of sick too. It's mid, I'm not gonna lie. So now we have a verified streamer fight in the chat, which is something, I'm just gonna say it, I didn't want it to come to that. But it is what it is, so I'm gonna need you to uh, fight to the death. And if you don't fight to the death, he will kill us both. We will be pitting two bad bitches against each other. Can I call you that? I probably shouldn't go around making a habit of it, but... <laughs> Yay! I'm not really, like, crushing it from a score standpoint. I, you know what? That's fine. We just need planets. The more planets, the merrier. It's Women's Month? That's damn true. But for me, Women's Month doesn't end on March 31st. It ends on April 12th, because I respect women that much. I give them an extra 13 days. Because they deserve it. Take this. Then it's back to business. Yes, <laughs> then it's back to international men's Quarter two. It's a very important. I observe it with with solemnness. I think you gotta go for now, brother. It's a very important time of the year for me. Hey, acrylic arrow. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, planets. This one's for you.
It's all about the gals until tax day. That's damn true. Maybe. I don't know. Why do I feel like I'm I'm throwing, even though like my deck should be pretty fucking good, man? Like I'm I'm kitted out here. Cause it's blue steak. That's probably fair. I do love hone. Hone is good. What's your favorite piece from Gustav Holst, The Planets? Um, why don't you just tell me the one that everybody uh, loves? It's Jupiter, right? Isn't Jupiter the one that everybody goes crazy for? Mars and Jupiter are the big ones. I'm not a big fan of Jupiter because I have heard personally that people go there to act more stupider. Which is something that I don't support. I think you should act with integrity and intelligence to the... As, as much intelligence as you can muster, at least. Obviously, not everybody feels the same way. I've been to Jupiter. It's really like that. You have not been to Ju... Are you the Gemini probe? Extremely I'm joking voice. Have any astronauts ever stepped foot on Jupiter? <laughs> okay, hang on. This is a spicy situation here. Okay, For, that's, that's a given. You have to sell popcorn. If it copies Cardamancer, I'm not going to cry. But anything, anything else it copies would be great too. Oh, but what if it... Sorry. Yes! <laughs> mm, that's a big one. That is a big one. But we'll keep going. I'm going to buy me a Mercury and cruise it up and down the road, brother. How about just using a fool? I know we could use it for Hermit, but like... We're getting some serious... Lizan al Gaib vibes out of this. We're playing three cards or less, so we'll take eight ball for now. We could take throwback, but call me crazy, I like playing the game instead of skipping all the blinds. So, like, I'm just different like that. I'm a different kind of beast. I play Falco. Send it. Let's go. We're we called the shot. We double doinked it. Double Arcanus. This is the first time in human history that a um, a High Priestess card is like the best card in the game. Temperance gives us 15 bucks. I mean, it's pretty solid, don't get me wrong. Give me a second here, give me a second. 2X Emperor. Now, I can't tell if you're just observing the situation around you or if you're making a reference to 2x Pimpy. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to know. We have five queens. Five queens. Queens and eights getting a little empress sloppy. Oh, dude, I'm realizing eight ball plus planet might go freaking crazy mode. Guess I could have afforded a joker. Yeah, yeah, yes. This kid is definitely on crack. Yes. I would play a simple pair for you to begin with. It's basically a discard. A little spooky. I'm flabber. Oh, you played five cards. That's right. I'm silly. <laughs> That's better. Two eights! I'm thinking we got a, a great scaling engine here. Strength the jack. I'm hoping to strength some, some sevens, to be honest with you.
Do we even have any sevens? How is it possible I haven't seen any sevens? You'll give me a Saturn? I mean, you gotta respect Hermit, honestly. You gotta respect it. Can I say something without you getting mad at me? I'm not going to take um, Vampire because it just, Vampire itself just dominates your playstyle so much. And to be honest, I like it and I think it is a good Joker, but I like to, my preferred playstyle is to make the deck like tight, remove cards I don't want, make like one really great card that I can then duplicate with death and stuff like that. And I, I like playing cards that are stacked. I like seals, I like molts, I like chips, I like steel, etc., etc. I don't like when the vampire just goes <laughs> and it, like it, it can be good, don't get me wrong, but it's, I don't know. In every situation, I, I don't think it's like you gotta take it. That's just me though. I like chips too, tortilla chips. You're not wrong. I think I prefer potato chips, but he, the question really isn't potato chips versus tortilla chips. It's potato chips versus tortilla chips and salsa, and then I gotta go tortilla chips and salsa any day of the week. But the thing is, bag of potato chips, two ninety nine, three fifty, something like that. Bag of tortilla chips plus salsa. I mean, you could be pushing eight nine bucks at that point still, but you're getting that. You're getting a nice taste though. Don't get me, and you're getting some nutritional content. You're not wrong. I guess, I mean, we, we do want malts at some point. These are just not my ideal malters. So for now, I'm going money mode, bro. You know what? I like what you said there. Someone said, hey, hey, NL. You a guac guy or a salsa guy? Somebody replied with my exact answer. Guac on a taco, salsa on a chip. I wouldn't turn down the, the guac on the chip or the salsa on the taco, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, if you're gonna, if you're gonna create a false dilemma, then I'm gonna respond to you in good faith. I'm gonna allow you to use a rhetorical technique against me. What about queso? Not against it by any stretch of the imagination. Me personally, I find it inferior to, uh, you're right, this is, this is where that should be. I find it inferior to the, the guac and the, and the salsa, but I'm, I'm not trying to cause any problems. I'm sorry to the hanged man card. You might be one of my favorite cards. I just don't have the space for you right now. But now we're freaking talking, bro. Now we're freaking talking. Oh. <laughs> it actually might be better for us. Oh, you're right. Blue seals would go crazy. It might be better for us to actually play a deliberately shitty hand, like a pair of eights with three extra cards. That way we could possibly get two planets per, per game. I love tarot cards, so I don't care who knows it. I love red seals, I don't care who knows it. I mean, I, I, I t just being straight up with you, you're gonna make it so easy to get planets off of an eight that I'm I'm straight chilling as far as I'm concerned. I'll roll you one more time. I'm a different kind of beast. I don't know the game mechanics. All you need to know on this one is the more planets we play, the happier we are. I'm willing, no, am I, I don't think I'm willing to lose money just to get planets to pop. Let's just play this. Do sevens not exist? Brother, that's what I'm saying. Me looking at IGN's list of reviews. Do sevens not exist? I don't know if that's fair. They might not be just giving things 
sixes and tens. They might they might be using all the points on the scale. I feel bad. It's it's easy to take a shot at IGN because no one comes to defend them. Okay, I they're probably they're they're doing good work over there. They're working hard. Sometimes the score doesn't match up with what I would give something, but that's why you know everybody's got opinions. Okay. Negative Joker. I love that for us. Oh, two sevens. Fucking finally, bro. I should have played bullshit so that it didn't accidentally win. We high priestess every day of the week. You have the pillar coming up. What's the pillar? You know what? Cards previously played this anti are debuffed. Oh, maybe, well, there's some sense and or sensibility involved there, I suppose. A rare discard situation. A common discard situation. Hermit, how could you? I thought the old lady threw it into the ocean at the end. We didn't get two eights, very surprising to me. How about 20 bucks, little man? Put that shit in my hands. They will not. Okay. Brother. <laughs> Negative, lusty joker. I mean... It's okay. It's okay, life goes on. No good strength targets means we use wheel. That's all right. Every I don't look at losing the wheel as a loss. I look at it as getting a win in the future. Now, to be honest with you, I totally think, like you might say astronomer, because then shit's free, but we're, we have unlimited money. Shit's free anyway. If anything, I think we want Turtle Bean to sell and run Troubadour instead to get to pairs of eights faster, which will give us more planets for free to begin with. This is the way. I like it, he's cooking. I mean, I, I'm not saying I never throw in Balatro, but like, I'm, I'm mostly trying to keep my head on a fucking swivel in this game. Like it's, it's no joke, bro. If you steal the red seal, does it trigger twice? Yes. This is like foundational knowledge I should definitely know. I appreciate the, the tip though. Huge. It actually wasn't that huge, but... <laughs> Same with golds. Oh, you taught me that? You've asked before? Sometimes you just forget, man. It just happens. So, Blueprint is a must-purchase, but I gotta think about things a little bit. Because do you sell 8-Ball, which is your scaling engine? No, you probably sell Troubadour, right? I just have, like, an endowment effect because of the fact that I just got it. Yeah. And then you run Blueprint on your 8-Ball, bro! I heard they just got your mans on Celestial Pack Crimes! The boy that you was hanging with! He didn't feel no guilt, no remorse, or nothing. Standard pack eight, please. Sorry, it's just not... It's just not what we're running here. We are unlikely to get two eights, but imagine... <laughs> Imagine all the eights living for today. Huge. And we get to go again. Not that we have another eight coming. We don't even have another freaking pair coming, bro. These two, three, four, five with a polychrome Andrew at the end. Just put that there real quick. We, we did it in time for sure. <laughs> Huge. 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 I'm sorry, I don't want you. Gonna buy me a Mercury, cruise it up and down the road. We do have, we have amazing scaling. 
What I would love to see is pair level up so high, we feel like we can dump half Joker and replace it with campfire. And then we're going to the fucking moon, bro. It's close, but I, I just hate you. But we're gonna use so many tarot cards. But I hate you because you're eternal. But you're already like you're given times 1.5. That's undeniable. But we're gonna get the times 1.5 out of you guys. Like with no, it's bait. Okay, never mind. One person in chat said it's bait. We're moving on. Random Joker disabled every hands. Honestly, we tanked that. I'm not even sweating that. Oh no, my eight ball. <laughs> Get fucked, buddy. I got two planets anyway, bitch. <laughs> Eat shit. I fucking own your ass. You ready for this? Huge. Language, please. Language. Bring it back now. Okay, without a doubt. You, you definitely do hieroglyph. Losing the hand sucks eventually, but we get way more time to scale our planets, which is valuable. Check for a negative. Doesn't exist. We go again. Negative Joker, you have to try. Hi, Domo! What was that sound? That was my cat, Tomo. Game drops worst negative joker of all time. Asked to leave. On the other hand. To-do list is good. Good at having a sell value of three and making temperance a little bit better in the future. I agree. Lots of planets. It's eternal. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's negative, so what do we care, bro? Wheel me. Wheel me. We're actually, next time, we're fucking due, bro. Force is a card to be selected. I don't think we care, because we just want to play a pair anyway. So if we, I was just going to say, if we got a pair of eights in hand, let me hit you with this. Huge. This is a good situation, y'all. Lots of planets coming in. Scaling's looking great. One extra hand per round. May, may be relevant at some point. He got his hand back. Me when I'm Carlito. It's teasing me, bro. It's teasing me. <laughs> it's time. The thing is, like, the polychrome on this is not that meaningful. Like, in a way, it's meaningful because we're already molting our molt so much that it has meaning. But because we're molting our molt so much, it's actually meaningless because we could easily just molt our molt even further. Like, the, I guess the question is, when we play a pair, our molt is 13, which then gets 20, so it becomes 33. 33 times 6 times 6 takes you up to, like... <laughs> I want to say 10,000. 1.2 thousand. Okay, thank you. I was off by a factor of 10. It's literally half of your end score. Yeah, but like what if this makes the molt that gets molted twice as high? You know what I mean? Like if this shit already gives 2x this molt, which it conceivably will in a little bit, then it's pre-polychromed. You know what I mean?
You could also wheel it later. I I hate to do it. I genuinely think this is the way. It just makes too much sense for me not to do it. Because it has future potential too. Like it gets stronger over time. Whereas the half joker was, was tapped out. It wasn't getting any better. Now the important thing, play eights. Draw three eights so you can discard this one for a tarot. It's not going to happen, folks. I'm going to... You just play him. You play him. It's, this is the way. The polychrome is getting better by scaling the base malt. That, but it, the polychrome doesn't have anything to do with it. I'm the one scaling the base malt. Now here... 32... 29... We're actually probably better off with Fortune Teller. We can get multiple tarot cards. You're, pr you're free to play five cards now. Would be nice to play four of a kinds and get the, get the molt popping. But if a pair is good enough, then we'd rather play a pair of eights to get two planets to scale Constellation. But we'll, I, I see what you're saying. We got to think about the we got to think about the future because that does scale way better in the long term. Death card things you you absolutely love to see. Beautiful. I'm gonna be a simple kind of man, and convert this seven into this eight, and then just let me take a peek at something for a second. Three of a kind is nineteen mults. Full house is 16 mults, but it would give us a little extra money off the gold seal. And if we don't win in one hand, it might actually be better for us, but but we did. By a lot. That hurts. Not really. It's, it went the way we wanted it to go. <clears throat> You appear to be confused. Um, let's let's dump some garbage. Start thinning the deck out a little bit. And then do it again. Driver's license, it is tempting, and I like I believe that we'll get there. But this I, I, I need to stress this. We're basically, on average, playing, like, we hope to play 34 flat mults. This gives us 35 mults. So this is a fucking 2x. This is a 3x, but we're not there yet. So, like, it's, I don't know. I feel like, me personally, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You got to ditch 8-ball. You have, honestly, you've lost your mind if you think I'm getting rid of 8-ball. You're actually, I'm not trying to lump all of chat into the same boat. You are basically telling me, every one of my jokers that's good, you're telling me to sell it. To buy some shit that is a times one mult right now. You've lost your mind. You don't know what you're talking about. You're the one who's out, Gabi, out of his mind. Eight ball stays. That's not even up for discussion as far as I'm concerned. At any point, if we get tight on score, we literally just do this, and then we're off to the races. This is just the scaling engine right now, bro. You don't even know where we're going here. Huge, huge. This is enormous. Send it. I'd like to buy some, some Martian cards if possible. But I, I do appreciate what they're doing for us with Pear. I, this has been a crazy run. Any run where you... Like, I'm on... We're on fucking blue steak, bro. We're on blue steak. And we're on anti-10. That's a dream come true. It doesn't get any better than that. Oh, 
I mean, mathematically, obviously it does, but... <laughs> Thank you for Mars. The mathematic is correct at all times. You're not wrong. You know what is annoying though? We still haven't had um, like the planets show up two times often voucher. And that's like, that would be insane right now, bro. You can get an eight in a standard pack. I could, you're, you're not wrong, but I do have to say like at the same time, do we really need another eight? Like, I mean, we got eight eights, 48 card. Nah, you're probably right. But pretty soon we're gonna end up hitting, well, I guess because we'd want to get four of a kind or five of a kind and not just pair. Yeah, no, no, you got a point there. You got a point there. I could, I could look for a, a polychrome joker. It might be the right decision, but here's all I'm gonna say about that is that it takes away our ability to get two planet cards, which really helps us out, bro. I'm not even sweating it. I'm, I'm willing to do this. A, it's not gonna break. B, if it does, we just get another eight. Easiest play of my life. Should play two hands with eights. Unfortunately, I'm too swagged up. Even a pair of eights wins the, the hand for us easily. I'm too swagged. It, it just makes, it makes the eights less likely to show up. I do appreciate the planet, but we only got two spots anyway. We're usually getting pretty full. You're tempting me. You are. You're tempting me. But <laughs> you're tempting me. But I don't think so. I don't think so. Things you love to see. More eights, please. You'll give me a Venus card. That is a... Oh, you know what? We have to use it. Because we need the space. Because we're about to create two planets here. It's got to be done. That's a surprise. That's a bit of a spooky surprise right there. But that's still enough score to beat the needle, so I'm not even sweating it. How have the runs been today? This is actually the first one. So I'm, I'm feeling very blessed right now. I'm feeling very hashtag blessed. I love a lot of this, but the, the, the dopamine that comes from a thin deck, that's worth a lot in this household. Oh, there was an eight! Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, it was, it was a vanilla eight. Hold your freaking horses. I'm not even worried about this. I'm swagged up to the gills to begin with. I'm a different kind of beast. There's my pair of eights. Literally, we don't need to move Blueprint. I'm, I'm telling you straight up, we don't need to move it. If you want to be a puss and cost yourself one planet permanently, by all means, go ahead. I'm a different kind of beast. I play Falco. What did I tell you? Now, things are getting real. <laughs> I will do none. Though it pains me. I will High Priestess. These guys are given like almost 10 each, bro. Okay, we hold. 13 million points. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. I think we've reached this point. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we're, we're not playing a full house with fives. That's just not gonna happen in this house. I'll gladly play four of a kind Andrews. Let's go! We live for one more ante. Now, Auntie 12, I can't speak for Auntie 12. That's where they start asking you for Mama Liz's E oil. Honestly, I, I, I hate that I think that the we need big swings now. We need wheel to polychrome one of our jokers. Oh, it's not, it's not polychrome, but I'll take it. Because it's 10 molt multiplied by 8.8, .8, multiplied by 8.8, .8, multiplied by 8.8. .8. That's something. And then fucking run it back, bro. Oh, I, I was I was high on my own supply. I 100% believed we were going to get it. <laughs> oh, we still can. Okay, we go next. What do you want from me? 19 million points. Big whoop. I'm not discarding this. It's just not going to happen. I'll discard that, though. I'll admit there's a little riskiness associated with it, but what do I care, bro? How about you take one of these and call me in the morning? How about you take one of these and call me in the morning? You're certainly going to call me in the morning after that. Then give me a little world card real quick. Then we play five of a kind. Oh, it's ass. No, no, no. So here's the thing. We have to play five of a kind in order to get five of a kind to unlock in planetary shops, but I think we can't do it because it's, it's anti-11. We have to play our best hand and ride it out. I believe in that. I'm tempted as well. You're right, there's zero sevens. These have to be strength. You're 100% right. We may have to play two four of a kind, so I'm not gonna discard this eight yet because I'm, I'm a little bit scared. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, bit of a waste, but life goes on. I just, I'm, I'm not, once we get up into the, this zone, I'm getting a little scared about the, the situation, okay? I'm just getting a little bit gun shy. I do agree that we, we may be reaching the point where we have to sell eight ball, but it's got to be, um, it's got to be for the right cause, you know? It's not going to be 13 molts. It's not going to be popcorn at this stage of my life. Uh, it, it actually could be card sharp. Card sharp is kind of crazy. This is basically though, and, and it's fine, like it is, it's the way. This is an admission that the run is soon to be over. I'm gonna keep you actually, you're scaring me a little bit with these, these scores here. None discards remain. That's horrible. But we got four queens. We get there. I'm a different kind of beast. Read the blind. Hey, Suited Toast, how about you read the score? Interesting. Polychrome Cardomancer. The question is, and finally, Planet Merchant, but it's too late. You're given 65 molts. <laughs> it's really hard for me to look at this and say that times 1.5 molt is going to be worth it. Because literally, it's giving us... Our base molt from Fortune Teller is almost giving us like 2.x to begin with. Drop card sharp, you lost your mind, okay? There's other factors at play, but two plays of the same hand gives you 3x multi on the second one with card sharp, whereas cardomancer effectively gives you 2.25. And we have four hands, so it gets even worse over time. Drop the to-do joker. Good idea, let me sell it. Oh wait, I can't, it's eternal and it's negative anyway. Read the fucking room, okay? We're having a serious conversation here.
Okay, now the adults are talking, okay? We're gonna go, we want Mars, but we gotta go Venus. We need more planets in the shop. That's a given. This would be a great econ purchase. If that's not gonna happen, I will take another eight because we've been going for eights the whole time anyway. I don't think you can take Cardamancer. I think it's a trap. I think they've attempted to trap us. Now, I think we're fucked anyway because we need like a billion points. <laughs> So I think, if anything, this is the right time. This You need 540 million points. What did I get on my last hand? I got like, like 80 million, right? 50 million? I think we got to spend down. I hate burning my whole economy, but... It's got to be done. In my opinion. Glass helps. You're not wrong. It's a great time to get glass cards. Oh my god. If you could polychrome something, I would cream my jeans. Oh. <laughs> that would have been huge. Okay. 540 milli incoming. Steel card is a huge help here. Hi, Tomo. I mean, brother, we got none eights. We got a... We gotta believe in the power of our queens, I think. And it fucking worked, bro. Now why don't you become this little lass right here, and then you become glass. And that's a that's a large Andrew right there, without a doubt. Four hundred and twenty-one million. Okay. But if we can play one more four of a kind, and there's two queens left in the deck, there's five eights. There's zero nines. So you just play dog shit and hope to draw a queen or two eights. We get one more kick at the can, boys. They fucked me. <laughs> I can't believe it. Did we play a pair already? We didn't play three of a kind, but we played a pair. A pair of eights might get you there. Fuck the 20 molt. No, embrace the 20 molt. We take big swings. No. Yes! <laughs> you discarded 1 8, though. You made a decision with incomplete information earlier, and due to probability, it ended up being incorrect. You fucking post hoc, Andy. Rhetorical technique ass motherfucker. We hold on this. We hold still. You gotta, you gotta keep queens, bro. Okay, now in this situation, this is a three of a kind type situation. You gotta start here with card sharp. I'd rather not play that red seal queen. You gotta play the cards as they're dealt, unfortunately. Give me the three X multi. We're cooked. This is the cookery. Every single person is my enemy. But still, had fun. Had fun on this one. Anytime you lose on anti-12, you gotta be happy about that. Fucking, anytime you lose on anti-9, you gotta be happy at this stage of our life. The stakes are not getting any easier. Let's put it that way. Slash marker me. They'll call that Balatro one because I gotta go pee. <laughs> Ghost Pepper, Ghost Pepper, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, and I'll see you, see you in just a moment.
Hello. Always nice to have a good Balatro run, bro. You should do some achievement hunting. Hang on one moment, please. Slash marker Balatro 2. I should do some achievement hunting. I guess I should. How do, how do I know what I'm missing here? I'm missing six jokers, two vouchers. You gotta check the Steam, the Steam portal. You do any challenges yet? I've I've not done any challenges yet. I guess we should be doing some challenges, right? Start a new challenge. The omelet. <laughs> All blinds give no reward money. Extra hands no longer earn money. Earn no interest. I see. So this one is all about selling your jokers at the right time. I understand the principle. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. I should know better. You don't fish for full houses. You fish for flushes. You already lost 30 bucks? How did I lose 30 bucks? Skipping devalues your eggs? Ah! Every skipped blind is $15 down. I see what you're talking about. That makes a lot of sense. I'm so used to playing Balatro the, the patrician's way. Which is, you just fucking only fight bosses. I see what you're talking about now. I probably run heavy snooze factor on this. And then six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then ace two, ace one, two, three, four, one of the best straights of all time. I would continue to hold snooze on this one, even though each one of these Andes is worth eight. I still hold snooze on this. I am going to fish for a spade flush. This is the first blind where you have to pay attention. I didn't discard the right card. <laughs> Never punished. Okay, one discard. We get there, boys. We get there. It's going to take a little bit of luck on the draw here. We need 34 points. Sorted. Okay, now we can start fishing for jokers, bro. Each one of these eggs is worth $11. I mean, hand size goes crazy. Don't get me wrong. We need... I'll be honest with you. You buy an Empress to stay alive, and then you go again. And then I'm holding four, five, six, seven. And I'm going four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna take a perspective play here and say either diamonds or even cards might give us a joker at some point. So we're gonna hit the, the even jokers. That's right, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, bro. Can you believe it? So we already have a flush. I guess it doesn't matter how many hands we take anyway, because we don't get the fucking... the fucking shit, you know? <laughs> so Vagabond seems crazy. The only thing is... Because, like, we'll always be at, like, zero money. The thing is, we're going to have to s spend nine extra dollars. Oh, this is pissing me off. Because if they just gave me one more dollar, I would just get hand size, bro. I could do a double sell. Like we could sell, sell. That takes us to $29. We buy this, buy this, buy this. I'm, I'm going double sell mode on this. It's a little scary, but plus one hand size is insanely good, I think. Then you buy a buffoon pack to fill up the extra space. 
it's straight up anus. Like, I will not be taking red card, but we can take Devious Joker, you know, just as a lark. And then we'll be re-rolling. And you know what? I'll take another Empress card any day of the damn week. And we go again. Okay, I see what you're, what you're cooking up here. Oh, I absolutely see what you're cooking up here. So, we want to play dog shit. Because then we'll get... It doesn't matter how many turns it takes us to begin with. That's fine. Because we just get more tarot cards out of it as a result of this. The man's a damn genius. Just don't die. I'm a different kind of beast. <laughs> Honestly, we will I'll spend three bucks on that. I do love hack. I'm just we got a we got a lot of stuff going on here, okay? We got a lot of stuff to consider. I don't really want this, but We'll use it, you never know. I, plus, I don't want to give myself too much money by accident. Base, chip, and molt are halved. Uh, right now, I just don't feel comfortable playing dog shit to farm tarot cards because the boss scares me. So I'm going to I'm gonna play a pretty good hand. And honestly, I feel great about that. I feel like that ended up being an awesome decision. I am discarding three of a kind. I know it's a, it's a bit of a crazy play. I'm also discarding a straight. I got a whole game plan, okay? I wouldn't expect you to understand. The long-term game plan is Molted Kings. That's a Flush House boy. <laughs> I guess I should have played some dog shit because we knew Flush House was going to win, but... Okay, it is what it is. It is what it is. Voucher, kind of interesting. I don't think it's that kind of run. Double your money? Mm. What's 2x0? Can I get a quick check on that? What does Vagabond do? Uh, Vagabond, if you have under $3, $3 or less and you play a hand, it gives you a tarot card. Great in a situation like this. Huge, huge. Because... We also don't get any extra um, money for finishing with some hands in reserve. So we can play dog doo-doo hands, get ourselves like down to one or two hands remaining, and then start sending some stuff down Main Street here. This has got to get us there. I, I'm, I'm comfortable playing. Basically what I'm saying is we can farm an insane amount of tarot cards as a result of the fact that we have Vagabond. And at some point we'll be selling these guys, but not yet. Hermit's, Hermit's a funny one. <laughs> Needs to be better jokers, bro. At some point we gotta go in, but we need to get better jokers. Banana me? I'm not that kind of beast, quite frankly. King me? I guess I don't really need the wild you. You're already a spade. Mm, I'll wild you for essentially no reason. Banana's like 10 bucks. Okay, Arrested Development, I see you. Plus two, plus two. <laughs> hmm. Not my favorite opportunity here, but I suppose it is what it is. You don't want to do that. You don't even really want to do this. Is this a challenge? It is. This is the ovoid challenge. You start with five eggs.
send it. So you, you earn no money from any other sources, basically. You have to sell your eggs in order to start uh, getting your econ off the ground. It's got to be the right kind of joker, bro. It's got to be the right kind of joker. I actually, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go crazy mode on you. I actually think we sell one. I'm not sure we hermit though, because <laughs> I'm not sure I want to just burn all my money on rerolls, but I think we go celestial pack in the service of buying more flush fives. And I'll admit, it's a, it's a crazy motherfucking play, bro. It's a bit of an insane play. What the hell else will you do with Hermit? I mean, you raise a good point, but I think the answer is nothing. Or like sell it at some point. Using Hermit has no downside. It has no upside though, because like, sure, I get 40 bucks and then I'm just gonna be rolling. I'm gonna roll like $33 away. The point is, we don't need, it's not taking up space that we need right now, so I'm not sweating it. The upside is that you have a space. Yeah, but I don't, I don't need the space right now. Am I, am I taking insane man pills or something? You can keep money? Yeah, but then it ruins Vagabond, bro. Okay, give me a, give me a quick justice on this, Andrew. Oh, right, I forgot. Apology accepted. Pair would get five extra. I mean, how many flushes have we played? Three flushes, some lucky kings. Full house is worth four. We've played one full house. In that case, I think we run flush. I'm not thrilled about it, but I think we run flush. We got the 20 mults. Still a little close. <laughs> Death card goes crazy though. Okay, it's time to get, uh, maybe it would have been better to just reroll, but it's time to get rid of the hermit here. We, how many pairs have we played? Five pairs. I think you embrace garbage. Empress is beautiful. It's a beautiful card to get here. I'm still going kings. I'm putting my trust in the game here. Two pair, it must get us there. I refuse to believe that it won't. Easy. <laughs> this was the pot play of Balatro. I don't mean to be offensive, but you were rude first. Is it possible that you just don't understand that it was actually the right play because it looked atypical? I mean, the game is not called, like, get as much money as possible. The game is called Balatro. You become a king. Queens get strengthened. Bulls make money, bears make money, little piggies get slaughtered. That's my motto. And then we start going crazy. Hero font. Might as well. Boss ante. Okay, what's the boss ante? Cards previously played this ante are debuffed. Not ideal. I'll give you that one. Not ideal. But you ever consider I missed the part where that's my problem? I'm playing flush five. I don't care. We got lots of kings. We'll make it work. This is the part where it's specifically your problem. And I'm telling you not to sweat it, okay? Just get ready. You're at $32 in my pocket. I think it's time to jettison. Spectral. 
I'd love some enhanced face cards. Thank you for not destroying a king. Dump some dookie. No temperance is crazy, but I'm not sweating it. I'm a different kind of beast. Necessary. Our first chips now exist. Negative Joker? Yeah, we don't want to play any more cards anyway, if possible, I suppose. Hey, Lost and Shattered, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. You're all getting dumped here. More discards remain. More discards await. You gotta be kidding me, man. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted to see. Hira font me. Some debuffed kings, don't give me... It's not even a flush five, which is a little stinky, but we send it out there regardless. That fucking sucked ass. <laughs> That's all right. We got multiple hands. Five, six, seven, eight, nine with two extra mults and three spades in this. Okay. Okay. A death card to send you to the moon. Dipped in Mama Liz's chili oil. A strength card to send you to the moon. Quick flush five for you. And we're straight chilling. Look at that. Act three started 40 minutes ago. I've been playing RuneScape. Chibli, you should do the name a woman challenge. It's, it is a lot of fun. Black deck, gold stake. Yo, Mouth, congratulations. I'm not, honestly, I'm bowing down. I don't think I can do it right now. I need way more skill to do it. I don't have gold stake on anybody, and black deck, I think, is the lowest stake I have. So here's what I'm thinking, okay? Yes, by selling egg, we will never be able to generate any more money ever again. However, with mail-in rebate, will be able to generate money. The only, actually, no, I, I hate to tell you this. I think it's bad because using mail-in rebate will make us unable to use Vagabond. I'm, I, it's the, I hate it as much as you do. It's the wrong decision to buy a negative joker here. There's exceptions to every rule, bro. I hate it. You might love it. It's just, uh, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Zero downside econ joker. Yeah, as long as you ignore all the downsides, it has zero downsides. That's pretty true. Okay, flush five will carry us here. Justice card may be relevant at some point. I'm willing to send you out there. Another Justice. You're a wild card. I kind of like you being a wild card right now. Now, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't want to be too risky. Just spend the money every round. Be bed mass ignoring motherfucker. As soon as we discard a seven, we won't be able to have Vagabond actually work for us. Well, I guess as long as we're on literally zero dollars, it could work. But it's hard to get yourself down to fucking zero because rerolls cost five and everything else costs like two to 20. So as soon as we're going to get to zero gold, discard two fucking sevens. Yay, we got six dollars. And all it cost us was four possible tarot cards that actually could have let us win the run. I get the idea, right? Wouldn't it be nice if there were just rules for life? You always buy negative jokers. You always buy polychrome jokers. It would make life so easy if we could just resort to heuristics in every situation. Unfortunately, around here, 
we consider the edge cases. We consider the circumstances. Sometimes we even do the math, bro. We walk it through and we rubber duck debug it instead of thinking there's a magic bullet to just being successful in every situation because every situation is a little bit different, okay? You got to use your noggin around these parts. 37 dollars i sleep we want tarot cards you take your heuristic ass back to the binding of isaac this is balatro we clown in this bitch dump them okay sixteen thousand five hundred. i gotta think about this i would say me personally i have no problem sending you Dookie down Main Street. Hangman card. Kind of a nice addition to the squad, honestly. Here's something you don't see every day. I guess we don't have to kill it just yet. We could just play it instead. Oh! Yes! <laughs> We play none glass jokers, because I might need those to get past the needle. Huge, huge. Perfectly placed. Now we got four bucks though. What the fuck? I could buy I can afford something. Hmm. Kill. Gold. Emperor could actually come in handy. Could come in handy. Quinn, use it. I kind of hate to do this, but I kind of don't hate to do this. I just want to make sure. I'm not pussyfooting around here. Didn't need it, but none of them broke. Are you really a Costco executive member? You ain't even got the axe, bro. 60 extra bucks a year, 2% cash back. Buy all your groceries there. Your shit's positive EV. Okay. I think the time has come. We have enough gold cards. I think you sell egg for $44. You buy photograph. We played so many high cards. We're never going to get flush five in a pack, bro. <laughs> Jumbo first. Use judgment first. I'm just, hang on, I'm thinking. Sell. Or sell. Sell. Use. Buy. Buy, buy, buy. Photo isn't great for your half, your flat malt. But it's like, it's gonna... It's going to give us 28 flat molt, right? Or do we, we most, sorry, it's going to give us 32 flat molt. Because it triggers on this before the Joker. So it'll get us to 32. Middle Joker's given like five molts. Yeah, the middle Joker's kind of ass. You're not wrong. Well, in that case, I see your point. You could sell Supernova and run Photograph instead and save this for a rainy day. That's actually a good idea. I'm, I'm kind of with you on that one. Sell me, judgment me. That's actually unbelievable. It's so much better than we could have asked for. This, it, it's the luckiest, it, possibly the luckiest Joker we could have gotten. <laughs> Might even be better than Campfire because our econ is fucked to begin with. Now we don't need shit, man. Now we can wait. I would... Oh, but it's so nice to buy a blank to possibly get an extra Joker space later. 
oh, we need to get down there for, for um, Vegabond anyway. And we play these out. Four of a kind, five of a kind, flush five, Chibli, Olivia Munn, Chibli. Send it. Send it down Main Street. Justice card. 20K. Keep paying 20K a day now that is eating good. I know what you're saying, big boy. I know what you're saying when you say it. Hmm. Because of the times four molts, we're getting there. I don't even think that's up for a discussion. We're doing okay on chips. So hit me with something like that. Emperor. World card is exactly what I wanted to see. This Andy does not need to be wild anymore. We can now make it lucky instead. Play flush five. I think you hold the glass. I'm not scared. Not even close. Yeah, blue joker is next to go, without a doubt. I would agree with you on that assessment. Four dollars. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's fucked, brother. I could sell you for two dollars and buy like a mime, I guess. That way, Vagabond still works. Mime gold is big bucks. Yeah, but if anything, I'm trying to go broke. I could sell the egg. Like at some point, it's the right decision. But like, I don't know, it's, it, I feel like it should be the last thing that we sell. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm the crazy one. If anything, well, thanks for the $50. I guess we won't use that right away. It just goes to show you how motherfucking good. Tarot cards are. Like this, I mean, admittedly, family is very helpful, but this whole deck for us is just like tarot cards, bro. Tarot cards have, have taken us where we need to go. So straight up, I'm just making a steel jack. I'm, I'm thinking endless mode right now. Temperance Fool. I, you don't understand. I mean, I, I feel like we're talking past each other here. If I temperance fool, I have to spend $90 on rerolls, bro. Or I could sell Vagabond, but that shit isn't happening because Vagabond is the engine that has allowed our deck to pop off to this point. I disagree fundamentally with, the, with your approach to the game. Baseball is pretty tempting. We could sell Egg Joker. <laughs> Finally. And then get this, and it's a 2.25x. It fucks our econ forever, but do we beat anti-8? Yeah, yeah, we easily beat anti-8. So it's a use, a sell, and a buy, and then our Kana pack. We may want to dump Vagabond now. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, because we got to save money for the right purchase. Honestly, I think it's a hanged man situation. We don't need to sell you yet, but we're, we're recognizing you're probably not going to do much for us. But we have to spend money on... Oh, you're right. It is on common. I don't think we... Considering we have no money coming in, 
I don't think we should fuck around with um, re-rolling, because that's money we'll never get back. I'd rather re-roll by just beating a blind and letting the shop re-roll itself. Check your boss blinds. All spades are debuffed. That's negative. <laughs> then sell tarot joker. I don't th like we don't we have a benefit to holding it because it's on common and gives us times 1.5 mults. We don't really have a benefit to selling it right now except to get three dollars we could spend on 60 percent of a reroll. I honestly th this is only forty thousand. I think we clear it even if the cards are debuffed. I honestly think it doesn't matter at all. And I think you're all sheep. I think you're not free thinkers. I think you're not real multipliers like me and the rest of my crew in chat. Easiest play of my life. And your ass was out here 30 seconds ago typing Monka S. Or even worse, saying, please use the sun card. Yeah, let's ruin my whole deck forever. For, for what, bro? For what? Okay. Well, Hieroglyph at this point, I don't think we care about, like, we, we're getting one less tarot card per time, but we're getting zero tarot cards anyway, so what do we care? We're specifically looking for uncommon jokers. We don't want to play Glass Kings until we got to play Glass Kings. If anything, this is a, I mean, we got a long way to go, but if we could play eight flush fives, our Celestial packs will start to always have Ceres in them. Interesting idea. It's gonna, gonna take a bit. <laughs> gonna take a bit, but... You know, uh, well, how we look in here? Nah, bro, we're not buying Mars. Rare Joker? No, no, no. We want Uncommon Joker. You seem to have me confused. It'd be, actually be, be amazing to get some Spectral Packs. So that we could get Purple Seals. I'll play four of a kind. I'm a different kind of beast. Thanks for the 20 bucks. If you find high card, you can hold on to it so it doesn't show in packs. That's mad genius moves right there. I never even considered that. It's incredible. You need to play five? Well, I didn't have five. <laughs> it doesn't work with telescope? Okay. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake in Balatro. It's a complicated game. What we do need to do as a society is work on the level of confidence that we are giving advice when we're not 100% sure of the situation. That's something that we as a society... Oh, you're an ace. <laughs> That's something we as a society need to, need to figure the frick out, bro. Take one extra hand. I'll take... Um, I, I think we're in thin deck situations here. We want to draw five kings faster. There may come a point where we have to play two flush fives in order to win. We go next. Negative joker. Straight up. Two negative jokers could go insane here. Vagabond is doing nothing. Okay, motherfucker. You bet you have a serious problem. Okay? Because you are simply the most recent person. You just waited too long. Let's scroll up and find the comment. Vagabond is doing nothing. This is Rodrigo79. Okay. Would the class like to explain why we're keeping Vagabond right now? First, let's look at the counterfactual. What do we get if we sell it? $3 and a Joker space. We haven't found a good Joker to replace it yet. So effectively, we get fucking nothing. And then, on top of that, we got Jim Joker, bro. The Jim Joker Hollow Rookie. 
signed one of one. It gives us a times 1.5 on our on our mult, bro. It's not hollow. I'm in in spirit. <laughs> You're right. It's not it's not hollow in reality, but it's hollow in my heart. I'm not saying get the hammers. I'm just saying I'm saying we need a better class of criminal. If there is a god, no, just play four of a kind. You you don't need to play flush five. I know you need it for telescope, but I don't want two kings to possibly risk breaking. I'll hold there. I'll hold there. Okay. That's a gimme. Rare negative that gives us extra molt when you discard jacks. We have five jacks in the deck. That's not insignificant, bro. That's not insignificant. I'm even gonna I'm gonna take a crazy play. I thought maybe we get a negative out of it. Whatever. It's money we'll never get back. I will take tarot card potential. I think you skip the other one. It pains me, but there's no negative strength. We can't turn a, a queen into a jack, so. And then negative half joker. Not applicable, but it's negative, so we'll take it anyway. That's life. 300,000, we're getting there. That's not even up for discussion. Chariot card. <laughs> Don't make a jack chariot. Because we like to discard our jacks. And don't they come back no more, no more, no more, no more. I'm willing to send it. Please don't break, though. It's been a while since we added a king. Things you love to see. I'll spend six bucks on this. This is, this is economics. Yeah, seems sensible. Buy egg. <laughs> don't it always seem to go? You don't know what you got till it's gone. Five million points, please. I think Wrathful Joker is on the chopping block next. I would tend to agree. Well, actually, no, Vagabond is probably next if we can find an uncommon. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess Vagabond is literally doing nothing. So it can go easily for this hot swap. I'd still like to replace you with an uncommon that gives us some value. But I'm not going to judgment it, although imagine if it worked out for us. Holy brother. I know we can make 28 bucks here, but I honestly think we get a lot of value out of, out of consistent draws as well. I know I'm a little crazy with it. You're right, that makes sense. That makes sense. One roll. No uncommons, we sleep. Very large blind, I'll have to take your word for that. Doesn't look that large to me, but what do I know? Dude, we've been having some good runs today. <laughs> I don't know if this challenge is, is easy or hard, but definitely came through in the clutch, man. Or did it? Oh, we need 19,000. I think we're straight chilling, bro. Right? <laughs> Cooked ass hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Achievement unlocked. We might as well try Endless. Like, Endless is fun. Extra Joker spot. I love that for us. Um... An uncommon, at least, is basically like a polychrome Andrew. It's not really going to help us out because we tend to play five of a kind a lot, but 
it's nice to see. I, fuck a gold card, man. I don't even care anymore. I can't discard you, though. Ooh, I'd like to, though. Wait, do I discard you? I get oh, 0. 0.5 instead of 1.5. Not as good. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We've gotten so lucky with these kings not breaking. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. Is that you, Tomo? He's making some weird noises. So close to flush five popping off, but I'm gonna chill for now. I mean, we, we're gonna make 220,000. I'm not sweating that too much. Congratulations, you have just become... I, I'm almost at the point, it's getting tempting to just make some king steal, because we like to keep them in hand to make an extra dollar anyway. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. Hang on, this is an important message. <clears throat> NL, did you get the newest Costco coupon? Stock cold brew? Stoke cold brew, I should say. Two pack on sale. Sir Panzer, I need, I need a, a check on this. What, what's the sale? Because normally I think it's two Stoke for $11.99 Canadian, which is a huge bargain because they're $9.49 each at Save On Foods in Vancouver, BC. I'm about to hit up my Costco. <laughs> April 8th to May 5th, $3 off. Oh, <laughs> two Stokes for $8.99? Dude, I'm putting that on the calendar. That's cra I gotta get there at opening, bro. They're probably gonna be sold out. That's great intel. Thank you. I I hate to say this, by the way. I don't think I can take oops all sixes, even though it's on common. It will make my lucky cards pop, but all of my glass cards will break like immediately. I think it's too risky. I know it's on common. I just think it, it breaks my glass cards too too routinely. As a as a penance, I threw you one extra reroll, even though I don't like the reroll, because that's money we're not getting back. Huge. Brother, I mean we need at some point we need to draw some kings. Don't break. Don't break. Don't break. Yay! <laughs> We've gotten so lucky, bro. Tarot cards appear 2x frequency. We just simmer for a minute. Spectral path, bro. I hate to skip, but especially at this stage of the game, it's a little spicy. But a, a spectral pack could be just what the doctor ordered. Get red seal on a on a steel. Don't skip for spectral, it's only worth four dollars. No, it's only cost its cost is only four dollars. Its value is determined by me. You know what? I trust you. You got in my fucking head. <laughs> Jumbo Celestial? No, no, no. Ne starting now is the Celestial Renaissance. If we could get Celestials. This is actually huge. Because... Now we've played as many flush fives as high cards. That's a big deal for us. 30 bucks in my pocket, kind of a big deal for us too. Abstract over Wrathful Joker. 
you're very close. Most of the times, this is going to give us 30 mults, and this gives us 24. It could get better if we get negative jokers, but it's kind of perspective. Oh, and you're right, Rothful triggers faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. The molt triggers earlier, which means that the steel cards are multiplying a larger number. We go through this a lot. I always appreciate the heads up. Thank you. I'll take a steel card. That's a gimme. Oh! <laughs> I mean, 50 chips when you got like 10,000 molts. That ain't nothing to sneeze at, bro. Okay, I mean, I'm a, I'm a simple kind of man. You're gonna put me in this situation, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight my way out of this situation. That was not even close to being good enough. I think we just lost. Okay, so you have to play... We can't discard Jax. You should play Dookie to draw more kings. What? <laughs> play for Dusk. Oh, you raised a good point. I mean, this is a horrendous draw. I'm just going to say it. We got six kings chilling in 21 cards at the back. With Dusk, I mean, I guess this is as good as it gets. Three steel cards, a mime, Dusk. Everything's getting re-triggered. We might, it's a couple luckies would help out. None luckies. Well, it stings, but you know, sometimes you just get balatrode. Let's call that slash marker. Balatrode too. Easy challenge. Let's do new run. Start a new challenge. 15 minute city. Easy straights and ride the bus, but we can't get rid of them. Shortcut and ride the bus. Okay. Check the deck. There's no ace two three. There's no ace two three. Is that correct? And it's double face cards. Oh, brother. <laughs> okay. In this case, I, I'm using my intelligence to surmise what I should do. What I think I should do is early game. I think I have no choice but to not skip and thus build this mult as high as possible. And we will pray that good jokers come up. It's actually so doable. We'll pray good jokers come up without rerolls. I'll play 555 on you. I'll dump a 555 on your head. You could ignore bus. At my own peril, I would say. I mean it's a, it's eternal. You gotta do something with it. This is easily one of the worst hands you could possibly fathom in this situation. <laughs> no! Okay. Um, if I play Jack of Clubs, does it fuck ride the bus even though it's debuffed? It doesn't, right? Because it doesn't count as a Jack. Huge. <laughs> it's that simple, bro. Draw a straight. Had to be done, bro. Had to be done. There was there was no other outcome. I'm alive. Sucks to have bus go back down to one though. Um 
sure, Ancient Joker could get us out of a pinch. And then maybe Arcana Pack will just save us. I don't even know what... I guess removing face cards goes kind of crazy. We got a long way to go, though. Okay, try to play some diamonds. Beautiful. Maybe we don't give a fuck. <laughs> maybe we just play face cards, bro. I mean, I guess if we don't have to, it would be nice, but... That's a straight flush! This is a tough one. This is a, it's a spicy one. No doubt about that. Clubs also give eight molts. I don't think we can afford to say no to that right now. Hmm. Diamonds. Da -da 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 -da. You know what I'm talking about? Islands heads. I would hold this. Fuck you. It's actually kind of sick, though. Make sure club goes first, and then throw this dookie alongside it. That's ass. What do you mean this is good? <laughs> That's pretty good, though. You ever done any seated runs? Best thing I can say about Balatro... Well, it's not the best thing. It's just another complimentary thing that I could say about Balatro. I am very anti seated run Andes. Because for me, it's like when people say, like, just wait till you get to this part of the movie. <laughs> and then, like, the whole, you're like, I have media literacy, motherfucker. Now I know that at that part of the movie, like, some shit's gonna go down. Game of Thrones and these always be like, wait till you get to season four, episode six. Uh, I'm like pre-spoiled. I'm spoiled on there being a spoiler. That being said. Balatro is such a good game that I, I could see myself possibly doing seated runs. I could see myself getting over my preconceived notions and biases. <laughs> and doing a seated run at some point. Well, we probably won't take Peridola. I think we're straight chilling for now, bro. We like hearts, we like clubs. So what we get sober? So what we smoke nothing? Know what I'm saying? Four, five, six, seven, nine. I think we dump that. Hold this. Okay, two pair, but but what a pair. Maybe phrasing on that one. I'm even putting my shit in the right order. Do you see how, how Balatro pilled I am? Ryan, what do I stream today? Can I first say, Chibli, thank you so much for the um, putting your faith in me. I do have to say, though, I'm not sure I got an answer for you. But not because, like, I don't have a good answer, but because I think that you, if you think about it, you will come up with a good answer. I have faith in you to come up with the best answer for Chibli. As long as it's not Stardew. I see a lot of people saying Stardew. Strength can turn kings into aces, at least. Just please not start. <laughs> I'm begging you. Hang on, I got an ad. I'll continue the conversation in 38 seconds. Okay, everyone, hold. Hold emotes in chat, please. We will wait for you, Chibli. Check this shit out. Club flush, bitch. You have no twos and threes? Yeah, but at least I could play like, you know, pair of aces or something, you know? Thank you, Sato Mori, for giving Chibli a gifted subscription. Thank you. 
<laughs> one more month of ad free. Why do you dislike Stardew so much? I'm not being an extreme hater, okay? I just find it boring to watch. That's it. I, it's no, no disrespect to the friends of mine who play it. I think they're great. I just don't like watching it. I'm expressing an opinion. I'm not being a hater. I didn't say fuck everybody who's ever played Stardew Valley. I mean, that's like, that, that would be insane. Hold this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, bro. With the with the spade at the back, it's perfect. Eight malts. Mouth's carrying, man. Like I, the the best thing I could say, or the the most honest thing I could say, is that the way that many people feel about a difficult game of climbing. That's how I feel about Stardew Valley. Like, I just, my brain is incapable of deriving pleasure from watching it. Clubs. Clubs. They love it. Straights can skip one. You're absolutely right. Now I will play nothing but straights forever. <laughs> Big hands, I know you're the one. What next? Anti-4? I think we're still chilling. Extra large blind, it does scare me. I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't scare me, because it does. We could use some mouth resonance on that. Mouth resonance, of course, is... Ancient Joker asking for clubs. Because then we get the 8 mult and the 1.5x on it. Econ's looking good. We haven't really committed to a hand, so I don't think we're I don't think we're supernova pilled. Does he hate accumulating interest? Honestly, like have you ever heard of like investing? Whenever I talked about investing, people would go, oh my god, shut the fuck up. Whenever I play a video game with money in it, people are like, this guy doesn't know about the power of compound interest. Of course I know about the power of compound interest, bro. S&P 500 is sitting at like 52.15 today. Shit's at all time highs. Sometimes in the video game, I like to play around. Did you not see the discourse on Twitter about have gamers lost sight of the fact that games are a, a, a space that you can play in and not simply like a to-do list of things to progress through? This shit got me thinking, man. I was like, I think that's true. Every I, I find myself increasingly as the years go by, if I make a decision that's fun instead of a decision that's optimal, I have to justify myself to people who have been brain jacked by Activision Blizzard. It's insane, man. You know, this is the playground. This is the schoolyard. This is recess. We're playing freeze tag. It's rock, paper, scissors. Sometimes you throw dynamite. Dynamite's not in the rule book. We're improv in here. We're improv -ing. You got a yes and me, bro. I just tell me you can't throw dynamite. Oh, well, you sound real mad just because dynamite kicks the shit out of paper. Would love, would love driver's license. I, I think we have to, we have to take a shot at it. My two cents, we have to take a shot at it. And Malf loves spades. Five, six, seven, eight, ten. Two spades at the back. This is a very risky play, don't get me wrong. But if we can get driver's license to work, it might just win the entire ante for us. Holy fuck, that sucks ass. <laughs> That's helpful, though. That's insanely helpful, bro. Hold. That wasn't even that good! <laughs> One, four, two sixes, two sevens. But our four is fucking slick with it. All right. 10, 10, 10. This hand is going to be ass. Throw the king alongside. Four, five, six, seven, eight with the six at the back.
Motherfucker. <laughs> Didn't even move the spades, but it's not gonna matter. That one, that one sucked. Wait, whoa, whoa, challenge me, challenge me. Start me off on a new challenge here. Start me off on a new challenge. 15 minute city. That's a run ender. I think you just, just a good blind, honestly, or like I guess a bad blind for us. I still embrace the power of building malts. I'm gonna try to commit to ride the bus. It's an enormous debuff, don't get me wrong. You know what we can do? We can say sucks to your ass, Mar. We could say, guess what, bitch? High card. We could say, guess what? High card. Now, things might get a little spicy. I'm just going to throw a little pair in there to make sure we're not super dead. Then we throw three of a kind at you. Oh! <laughs> does this deck have more face cards? It does indeed. It has double the face cards. My interest though. Are we gonna do this again? Is this is this how you saw this shit going down? So what we high card. So what we smoke nothing. I'm just a little scared we won't get the 450, so I'm I'm sending it. Didn't have to be scared, that's alright, we chill on that. Plus one hand size. It's a little weak, but I'll chill with it for now. I'm a simple man. Watch this. 4-4 four, four lets you discard King Jack. You get to remove some dookie from your hands. I mean, we could just discard, but 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Even better. Pair of nines with a 10 kicker dipped in Mama Liz's chili oil. Play a four. Five, six, seven, eight, ten, bitch. We should, in my personal opinion, we should fish for a rare joker. I cannot be tempted. I'm Lizan Al Gaib. This isn't gonna win in one hand. Give me four, five, seven, eight, nine. So we got some space. If we see the opportunity to oh fuck. <laughs> if we see the opportunity to skip for a rare joker, we take it, because something that molts our molt would go insane right now. I'll go Mega Arcana. I'll like I'll Empress out of my gourd right now. And then fool card to get another empress in my hand. Why are we spice posting? Because it's Dune's world, brother, and we're just living in it. Would you guys rather live on Earth or Arrakis? What do you think? Earth did great, but I got to give it to my planet Arrakis. Because it did... Oh, I screwed it up. <laughs> How about pair of sixes dumping a king and a queen? How about ace that lets you dump a queen? The man's a damn genius. How about discarding your queens? How about 10, 9, 8, 7? Just to let them know you're fucking with them. And then we hit you with one of these. The kill shot. I mean, this this line is at plus 16 mo. It's, it's a spicy play, but I definitely think it's the right play. I mean, this is a damn gimme. It's one of the most gimme gimmies I've ever seen. Unless it copies shortcut, in which case I will be alt f 4 Four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. 
when it all works out together. How about, how about we start small? Four, five, six. Four, five. Ace, king, jack. Now I'm getting a little scared, even though I probably shouldn't be. So we hit you with the straight. Imagine double shortcut worked. So true. Fucking hit him with an ace, four, seven, ten, king straight. That would be fucking crazy, bro. I can't believe how long it took me to, like, do the math on it. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing. I'm a big cardamancer guy, though. I'll be honest with you. I'm a big cardamancer guy. Love it. This is def is guaranteed to work. It's guaranteed to work. Imagine double smeared Joker made everything wild. My fucking ass when it all gets debuffed simultaneously on every single boss blind. <gasps> Easiest dumpa in my life. Hmm, hmm. I'll tell you what. Three eights. Oh, it's a full house, which means it can't. No! So what did I think was going to happen there? Well, I don't want to tell you because you're going to be like, that's stupid. It's not how it works. And I know that now. Playing a pair <clears throat> allows you to then dump a face card as a high card and it won't count as a score it turns out playing three of a kind doesn't let you dump a pair of face cards using the same logic <laughs> in this business we hold there's no shot man 10 jack queen king oh. There's no, it's it's over. The dream is dead. What are we at? 201? I got one more attempt in me because we started a little late today. Run it back. Because now we know what we're doing too. You're dumping dog shit. You're playing at your residence to build up, ride the bus as much as possible. So you, we got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We play a ten. We definitely don't play any of that shit. We'll play some of this shit right here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That last run definitely could have won too. That's the worst part. Maybe it's lame, but I just ignored bus for this one. One thing you need to know about me, I'm a different kind of beast. I feel like, well, I don't, I don't feel like you've done anything wrong, by the way. I feel like we actually have a great possible run. I, I think the secret is the power of, of telescope. We play so many high cards to build up Ride the Bus. You buy Telescope and then start buying Celestial Packs and just pumping high card as high as it can go. These don't count. I love that for us. It's so over. It's anti-1, bro. This shit is, it ain't even started yet. They got you saying it's so over. It's an embarrassment. Don't screw this one up. <laughs> Four, five, six, eight, nine will work. You need obelisk in this? Stop telling me you gotta tell the shop, bro. You gotta tell the shop. We go spectral. Any day of the week we go spectral. Aura. 
I don't really want three enhanced face cards. I would, I would happily accept a, a foil five, even though it's the lowest possible roll. We go again. Telescope, I'm telling you, you may not believe me, that's your prerogative. Telescope's gonna be huge for us, bro. Plus, I don't know about you, there's like a, the, the least satisfying deck to play, flushes. Second least satisfying deck to play, full house. Satisfying decks to play, high card, five of a kind, flush house, four of a kind, pair, straight. If you can play weird hands that are normally hard to get and make it work, it's just fun. You feel like a boss when you do it. You're bossing up. It's boss o'clock. I think I gotta play. Can I play something even dookier? Nope. <laughs> you like corn dogs? Assuming you're not about to ligma me. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I go insane for them, but I'm, I would say that I enjoy, I enjoy eating them. Corn dog in my balls. <laughs> Listen, I told you that in confidence. I will say though, it's not gonna get me any fans. One of the most overrated foods currently out there in the marketplace of ideas, Korean corn dogs. They're not bad. At the end of the day, it's, you know, a pork cylinder wrapped in French fries with like big fluffy breadcrumbs on it. But the, the way that people talk about it as if like it's the, the grandest, I guess I wouldn't be able to afford this if I didn't do this first. The grandest food you'll ever see Plus, like a corn dog should be three dollars and fifty cents, and Korean corn dogs in Canada—they're like, from a food truck, nine, ten bucks. I just just give me a pogo, brother. Just give me a hot dog that's breaded. I don't need all the fucking the okonomiyaki sauce and then the gochujang on top of it. YouTube's obsessed with Korean street food. I know, and I always feel like a like a bad guy. But like I lived in Korea and I ate the street food now and then. And I'm like, it's good, but it's not like the best food on planet Earth. You got to acknowledge that most of it is cooked in a fucking street level deep fryer attached to wheels. Like they got a lot of limitations to, <laughs> to the, the business that they're running. They're doing what they can and, and a lot of it turns out. But and it's the best food ever, isn't if you believe that, then that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that I... If, listen, if you're coming out of Samduk Sobang So, 2 a.m., you just left Who's Bob, you're fucking hammered, sure, get like a little pizza inside of a cup. Get a Korean corn dog. Get a fucking Pikachu-shaped, like, cutlet on a stick or something like that. But if it's 6 p.m. and you're like, what do you want to do for dinner? Do not go to the joke ball cart. You can do better, man. There's lots of amazing food in South Korea. Hang on, you can only play one hand. Hello, Kate, by the way. I'm just going a little late, Kate, because I'm addicted to ballad show, but also I started a little late today. How do you know about joke ball? I lived in Korea! <laughs> I was in the pool! Hang on, I can only play one hand. In that case, we do this. What are your, some, some of your favorite Korean foods? Well, let me just say, especially in the past year, Kate and I have been eating a lot more Korean barbecue. And it's, it's not just a great food, but it's a wonderful restaurant experience. You feast. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'm always happy to be a part of it. I did see, and I don't want to throw my good friend under the bus here, but I did see Cobalt Streak say, is it considered not okay to bring your own gochujang to Korean barbecue? 
And uh, some people were in the comments like, what, they don't give you gochujang? Korean barbecue is not traditionally a gochujang added experience. I get that it's Korean food, so you think it's got to have gochujang the same way everything Canadian has to have maple syrup. But Korean barbecue is samjang, and then maybe like some chamgi room with some salt in it, and then maybe one other sauce, probably like a, like a ponzu inspired soy sauce type deal. It's, you shouldn't be, if you want to be traditional, you shouldn't be dipping the samgyeopsal in gochujang. The flavor of the gochujang is too strong. You can put the gochujang in your bibimbap, okay? You can put the gochujang, you, you can put it on a lot of things, okay? You can, you can dip steamed broccoli into it, but Korean barbecue, traditionally, the gochujang is not what you're, you're doing there, okay? I'm not trying to cause problems. I'm simply, I'm stating my reality. Now, that being said, you, if you want to dip it, then fucking dip it, bro. Don't let me tell you. If you love the way it tastes, that's fine. But I was just, that the Food Network Andes that were in the comments that were like, they don't give you gochujang at the KBBQ restaurant? I'm like, yeah, because it's probably fucking owned by people who know what Korean barbecue is served with. Like, you don't even know what you're getting mad about, bro. I need a joker. You can bring your own Mama Liz's chili oil. Sure, I'm not gonna insult that. Okay, what, we, we played 10 high cards. I'd still like to get my interest popping before we start buying Celestial Packs. I understand we haven't really lived by that code up to this point, but so be it. I'm starting to get a little nervous about this, honestly. Anyway. <clears throat> Six, three, nine, ten, jack. No, I don't think we will be doing that. We're Costco guys. Of course we don't play that. Canada has the coolest looking money on earth. Things that are damn true. I'll take things that are damn true for a thousand, Alex. <laughs> Counterpoint the Karl Marx Euro. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, would we rather... I mean, you're like a times fucking one Andy, man. Maybe we don't want to play high card. Maybe we want to play high card a lot in order to get Ride the Bus popping, but we actually want to buy Saturn because we're playing straights most often. Whatever, you just got to get the anti-8. Play only one hand type this round. You motherfucker, you. <laughs> you motherfucker, you. Okay, okay, we have to get to a straight. No, we don't. Well, <laughs> it would be nice. Um, we could play just flushes. No, well, let me think about this. I'm going for four of a kind. We did not get there. I can live with that. I'm going to play three of a kind with a stone and throw the queen alongside it. And then I'm going to play three of a kind with these face cards alongside it. Then I'm going to play this. We have one five left in the deck, huh? <laughs> All right. Right play, bad draws. It happens. It happens. Dump the face cards. Ch class, can we explain why we wouldn't dump the face cards when our high card was like a 10? Oh, let me skip to this because we're at the end of the stream. 
the face cards would have counted as our high cards and thus would have scored and would have ruined ride the bus. They wouldn't count? Why not? It was, a, oh, oh, you're right, because it wouldn't count because it wouldn't be five cards. You genius. Or because it's not the same hand. That actually might, they, they should have a button, local thunk. If you want to ruin people's lives, there should be a button that's like, show me what I could have drawn in my next draw. Imagine if I press that button and there was a five there. Oh man, it would have made all the difference. Like when you lose, you should be able to click on your deck and see the order of what you would have drawn. I don't know if that's discovered at runtime or if it's seated when the deck pops up at the start of the round, but imagine. Okay, Senchmark, we'll call that Balatro. I think it's Balatro three. Let me see if my wife is ready to stream. Hello. Are you ready to stream? Smiley face. She's streaming already! Good stream today. I hope tomorrow we can beat a difficult game about climbing. You can spoil it for me. Once you touch uh, Maggie Simpson's pacifier, how much is left in the game? Two minutes? Okay, but what if you're not a speedrunner? 5%. Okay, 5%. I can live with that. See you tomorrow. Bye.